welcome to a very special five hours of football. Beginning from the SCG with Sydney versus Melbourne. Only two matches left in the 1994 home and away series and still the eight isn't finalised. A very good afternoon everyone, welcome to the SCG for the all-important Sydney-Melbourne clash. A big afternoon of football on Seven Sport, many stations taking the other big game of the afternoon and that of course is over in Subiaco between the West Coast Eagles and Footscray. Sydney and Melbourne. A win for the Demons will put them back into the top eight to contest the final series. A win for the Swans would get them off the bottom of the ladder. So a lot is at stake for both these sides. And the man who's going to have a big say in what happens this afternoon is Demons coach Neil Barm. Neil, good afternoon. Thanks, Pete. A few butterflies in the stomach? Oh, there always are. I mean, you put a lot of work into a season for it to come down to the last game to, uh, to qualify for the finals. Obviously, there's a bit of nervousness there, but in some ways, I guess it's uh, set up for us. Um, all we've got to do is play as well as we can or get the most out of ourselves, and uh, we should be there for next week. The Swans have won their last two games against you. You knew I was going to ask you that. Is that in the back of your mind, that uh, they've got a good record against you? Well, in some ways, that's probably to our advantage and that we certainly won't underestimate them at all. Um, but, I mean, they, they've got a pretty good record against us in the last couple of games, so we know they'll come out having a real crack at it and they will believe in themselves and they won't, uh, won't be easy meet. But, uh, you know, it's, the opportunity is there for us to play finals and I reckon that'll be enough to get us there. What's the key to winning here in Sydney? Because many sides do struggle up here. Well, I, I don't know. I don't, uh, even though it's a little bit shorter and perhaps a bit wider than the conventional ground, I don't think that should make that much difference to the way you play. It's um, like everything else. If you've got a hold of the footy, it doesn't really matter that much and I think that's, uh, that's going to be the key to it. What about the heat factor? You played in Brisbane a few weeks ago and won. It was a top contest and it's going to be warm here this afternoon. Forecast top in the mid to high 20s. Well, we, we believe if it's hot for us, it's hot for them. So it shouldn't, shouldn't be a problem. Um, and there's, so there's a thing like acclimatisation, but I don't think it gets that much hotter in Sydney generally than it is in Melbourne. So I don't think that'll be an issue. It will be an issue for all players because it will be a bit hot, but uh, it shouldn't favour the other side. What about changes in the side now? You've uh, lost Glenn Lovett again. That's a big blow for you. Yes, he's a very important player for us, but... Um, yeah, he's out this week and uh, hopefully he'll be available for us next week. Now, looking at the side that you've chosen today, what have you gone for exactly because the track is going to be hard and fast? Well, we have uh, we try and have uh, on-ballers who can run a bit and I reckon we've, that's been, when we've played well, that's been our strength and uh, that's what we're really aiming for here. But we've got some uh, good, good marking forwards, some blokes who put a lot of pressure on them so we can get it in quickly to them. That will also put some pressure on the opposition. I probably know the answer to this next question before I ask it, but looking to next week, if you do win today, you might have to go over to Western Australia to play the Eagles in Perth. Would that worry you? Well, we haven't been there for the last couple of years, uh, but uh, I'd much rather be uh, facing the Eagles than no one. So, uh, I mean, obviously that's the way the, the eight set up. We aim to finish a bit higher, but we'll be happy with seventh or eighth rather than ninth. Uh, and then uh, when you're there, obviously there's a, an opportunity for you to do something about it, but we'll worry about that then, I think. <laughs> I thought you'd say that, <laughs> Barmy. Thanks for your time and good luck this afternoon. Thanks, Peter. Thank you. The confident Neil Barm, but not certainly overconfident with the big task ahead against Sydney here at the SCG this afternoon. As I said, one of the factors could be the warmth forecast top in the mid to high 20s that will certainly test players of both sides here this afternoon. We'll take a break from the SCG, back after this. have always had the muscle, but the work cover people... The crystal ball out, isn't it? That is, Pete, and uh, it's going to be very interesting, as you mentioned, this game, because uh, Sydney obviously want to finish on a high, but if Melbourne are going to be any good, they've got to win today. If they're a good side, they'll win today. Fair call. Let's take a look at the ladder now, because if Melbourne wins, the Demons will oust Richmond. They have a much inferior percentage, the Tigers, and so they would go out. And of course, looking down the bottom of the ladder, Sydney can take the, uh, or will lose the wooden spoon, they'll give it to Fitzroy, if they win here this afternoon by any sort of a reasonable margin. Okay, so let's look at the two sides, Don, and uh, a couple of uh, late changes. Neil Barn told us that uh, Lovett was uh, a late withdrawal from the Melbourne side, but let's take a look at the Sydney lineup first of all. Yes, well, uh... Smith and Chapman are late inclusions in this side. Smith number 40 from uh, Southern. He played in Southern. He's played a few games and been very impressive. Dale Lewis, hot and cold. Whether Dale's on his job today, we'll just have to wait and see as the game pans out. But when he's good, he's very good. Creswell's probably leading their best and fairest at uh, Sydney. And Peter Falandi has been a terrific pickup, the ex-Essendon Rover for Sydney. There's Gary Lyon. 
an integral part playing up at full forward. He kicked five goals last week and he's very, very important. And also Stephen Kingay had his colours lowered. Kim Costa from Footscray is a real giant killer this year. He's knocked off some big names and he held Tingay down. Tingay only had four kicks and three handballs last week, but he's been averaging up, up around the 20. Sean Charles is also very important. He's a small, a smaller player up in the forward line. He's got speed and skill, so he's an integral part as well. Okay, thank you, Scotty. And of course, uh, down in the crowd, uh, one player who would certainly be in the Sydney side today is young Jamie Lawson, who's suffering from a broken leg and complications there too. But great to see him here at the match today. And let's hope he can make a speedy recovery. As I said, a few complications, but hopefully he can be back in the Sydney Swan side next year. Match about to get underway here shortly at the SCG. We'll take a break. Back with the action after this. Breaking up, likewise the Swans, and a very good afternoon to Neil Cordy. Great conditions. Good afternoon, Peter. Yeah, I think I've got the good job today standing out here in the sunshine. Uh, probably a little bit uh, on the warm side for the players, but certainly terrific for the spectators that have turned out today. The game, well, I think uh, there's good reason for some nervousness on the part of the uh, Melbourne supporters and optimism for the for the Richmond supporters because the, the track record for the Swans in recent history against Melbourne has been very good and they do tend to match up very well. But I think, as Scotty said, the problem's going to be with uh, maintaining that intensity when it, when it gets a little bit tight towards the end of the game. And I think that might be what uh, will get Melbourne through today, Pete. Selection, uh, Neil? Uh, Melbourne. OK, and a very good afternoon to the Dennis Committee. Dennis. Yeah, hi, Pete. Well, I think incentive's a great thing in football. Melbourne, everything to play for this afternoon, so I think they can win and probably win comfortably. All right, uh, Don Scott, your selection? Well, I'm going for Melbourne, Peter. Well, it's going to be a pretty close game, I think, one way or the other. First quarter, breeze not really a factor. If there is any breeze at all, it would be blowing from right to left. But they were kicking goals at both ends in the BSFL match as the curtain raiser here this afternoon. Obst went up, couldn't bring it down. Tingay's in there. Paddling it forward, Vidi gives the hand pass away. Stephen Phoebe's kick back towards the centre circle. Charles. So Melbourne to go forward first. Charles kicks towards the true centre half forward position. And by gee, you'd just about have to pay that mark. The umpire has played it to Schwartz. And David Schwartz, with the breeze at his back, should be able to get the distance from there. Be a great start for the D's if he can. Kicks from 48 metres. And gets under it pretty well. That's a great start for Melbourne. First blood. Well, it's great to see David Schwartz playing the, well, the way he can play. He um, had a lot of pressure went on him as a youngster. Had a lot of ability, but now he's got that important thing, and it's called consistency. And as he's matured, he's become more consistent, and he is an integral part of that forward line. Very, very important. See there, Mark Bays has got the job on him, and that's a compliment. So back in the middle, Rucks go at it. Rose with an opportunity, thumps it down towards half forward. Hopgood's in the road. Kicks it out very wide. Here comes Charles. Wants to Shepherd. That's interesting. Pike went down. It comes back to Charles. Opportunity close to the boundary line. Holding the ball, perhaps. In fact, a high tackle. And a free kick to Pike out there. Pike forward of the wing. Kicks in towards centre half forward. Lion up. He goes. Spectacular attempt. It falls forward. Taken by Dyson. Stood up in the tackle. Opportunity for Ops now. About 35 metres out from goal. That's a great effort. Got the hand pass from Viney. And Melbourne get the first goal. Second as well. <laughs> Great start for them, isn't it? And Andrew Ops, one of those players that I do admire in AFL. He's quite an unassuming fellow. He works really hard. He's got terrific work, work ethic. He trains hard. And here he is. And he's had a wretched run with injury this year. But let's hope that he continues on because he's a great fellow, Andrew Ops. Well, the D's meeting business here this afternoon. Two quick goals. And we've only been playing a minute and a half in the first quarter. The Swans yet to pass the centre. Maybe they can do it here. They certainly have to get something moving to try to keep their scoreboard ticking over. Yet to break the ice. Now Lewis a chance at right half forward. Will he give it to Philandia? No. Well, Philandia gets what was uh, at best a poor kick. Kepler into the goal square. This will be their first. Mitten Connell from five metres scores it. 
Well, that's the third goal of the game. And each goal has been rather easy to kick, which may be interesting if this pattern continues. It'll be a very high-scoring game. As Sydney go forward there for their only time, here's Lewis, who is very hot and cold. Landia over the top, and this is good by Kapler, realising that Minton Connell was by himself, and through it goes. Interesting that Derek Kick is playing up in the forward line. He was a loose man in defence last week for Sydney. Back in the middle. Interesting start, this. Phoebe tries to crash his way through. Could have been pushed in the back. In fact, he's going to get the kick alongside the centre circle. Matthew Phoebe He's had a wonderful season. Some indecision. Now goes for distance down towards centre half forward. Schwartz is up this time. A lot of swans in the air as well. Bayes kept it in front. On his knees and getting up. Well played there by Charles. Tingay an opportunity now. Swings it out wide for Pike. Can he keep it in? It runs away from him. Close to the line. Pike took it across. Yes. Matthew Phoebe limping too, Dennis, after that uh, little uh, not altercation. Uh, when he contested the ball, came up with the free kick. He looks a bit proppy. Throw in right on the 50. Schwartz gets it down. Doreen to Kelly. Spots Higgins. And actually, uh, that's Phoebe's man. And uh, Phoebe is limping, as Peter already mentioned, a long way behind play. Kicked it to the wing. Intended for Dunkley, who missed the mark. Another Northern free kick. Stephen Phoebe this time. Right on the boundary line. Below our commentary position. Lewis stands the mark. Stephen Phoebe's kick towards centre half forward. Bays punches. Viney grabbed by the jumper. Tried to get rid of it. Can't do so. And it's all tied up again. Jason Daniels has the football, but it's going to be a bounce. At left half forward for Melbourne, 16 and a half minutes left in the opening term. Andy Lovell acknowledging the work of uh, Todd Viney on that occasion. Viney really hard at the ball. He's a hard competitor, Todd. The ground is hard too, as you see the weather forecast there. Top of uh, 26 degrees, 28 degrees. Peter, a lot of the fellows in the reserve grade competition with the game on earlier had trouble with their footing, especially around this centre area. So the ground could be a factor here. I see a lot of them wearing moulded soles. Bounced by the umpire, rose up high. So too was Schwartz. The Melbourne ball, Tingay from Obst. They're in top form at the moment. Love it, chases after it, paddles it forward. Not very far. Swans with the numbers there at the fall of the ball. Doreen tries to get the hand pass away, intercepting the Melbourne captain. Lions kick, bounces. Looks like the Sahara Desert there. And the backdrop for the desert song. One behind. First behind of the match. 2-1 Melbourne. Leading Sydney by seven points. Peter Caven. Kicks Ooh. in very close to the line. Was it touched across by Huskus? I'm not sure. It may Just. have been. Yes. So boundary throw in. Bit lucky there. Very casual kick in from Caven. Boundary umpire deliberated for some time. Daniels didn't appear to have it. Advantage is paid. The way they come through Cresswell, that's a shocking kick. Rose missed it. Love it. So Phoebe into trouble. Opportunity for Obst. Not a good kick either. Down towards the pocket. Once again, Caven. Better kick this time. Went for distance. Runs it back towards the wing on the bounce. It's still in. And Phoebe can't keep it in any longer. Across the line it goes. It's a boundary throw in on the wing. Steve Phoebe. Last time they played, a huge surprise. Sydney coming from a long way behind at three quarter time. Dermot Brereton, a key factor in that victory. Here's Kelly. Ooh. Too high. And he'd be ordered off. He was playing rugby league. Andy Lovell. Here it is, the high tackle. Whoa. He goes in short. Mark taken by Rose at right centre wing. Decides to play on. Kicks well inside 50. Lewis was the flyer for Sydney. Kick it was there. So to Cow. Lewis looks for the free kick. There is none. Coming out with the football was Paul Primke. It's going to be a bounce. 45 metres out from the Sydney Swans goal. 14 and a half minutes left in the first quarter. Caulfield, Callahan and McKernan. The umpires this afternoon. Steins wins it at the second attempt. Almost an excuse for uh, wearing his cap this afternoon. Lewis, interesting hand pass. Neats, Steins. Back it goes to uh, Hopgood, and they're away. 
Phoebe. Shocking kick. Some of the field kicking this afternoon is pretty ordinary. Andy Lovell got a push in the back. The umpire lets it go. Schwartz farms it out. Not a great hand pass. Barney's been busy, uh, busy so far. Standing start kick by step. Matthew Phoebe advising he's kicked a goal. McDonald's and the Flintstones are taking you all the way back to Bedrock. Welcome to Rock Donald's. May I chisel your order? The Bedrock $2 dinner deal. A cheeseburger, small fries and a small Coke, all for a rock bottom $2. But only after 5pm. The Bedrock $2 dinner deal after 5pm. Better rock in fast. It's rock time. Melbourne by 13 points back in the middle. Steins took a run at it, missed the ball. It spills wide of the pack, picked up by Daniels, who kicks it down towards half forward. Very high bounce. Lewis camped in front, knocked it down to his own advantage, got it across to Dunkley, lays it off to Daniels, who initiated this from the middle. Advantage is paid. Sydney work it inside the 50. White's got it. Straight to Kapler, though. Kelly is on. Wayward hand pass. Kelly gets it across to Creswell. 35 metres out, pulls it back, wide in from the side. Minton Connell got his fingertips to it. And across the line it went. So behind. The margin is 12 points. Must win game for the Demons this. They've spent 16 weeks in the top eight this season, including three on top. Well, the option's well covered by Sydney. Cowell a little long, bring that ball in, but he's found. Hop good. Teammate. Towards the outer side, this is Smith. In pursuit is Lovell. Play on's the call. Higgins has it now. Goes down towards half forward. Cresswell, hard against the line. Men on in the middle. Initially, he ignores them. Now, eventually decides to go and off. Well, he had a long time to get across and cover. He did and took the mark, surrounded by Swans. Uses the ball well. This is Tim Gay. Just forward of the wing, just outside the centre square. Where's Lyon? On the end of this, perhaps. He's in front, worked under the ball. Missed by Bayes, taken by Schwartz. Bounces a goal. His second. Melbourne's fourth. Well, it looked a little casual by Bayes, but he really didn't control the ball. As we see this ball go over the head of the pack, Bayes running onto it, and you see there Bayes in, but he just didn't quite control it. It wasn't a case of being casual. He just didn't quite control it. And Schwartz, who was running behind, was favoured by that bounce, and uh, it was a good snapshot. That's his second goal, David Schwartz. A very tall forward line with Lyon, Pike, and also Schwartz down there. Well, the Demons certainly pumped up for this match, 4-1 to 1-1, and we're not halfway through the first quarter, so Tiger fans would be hoping that uh, the Swans can regroup. Smith tries to give them something for Landia onto Daniels. Two of their best players this year. Low trajectory pass down to Minton Connell. Oh, that's a great tackle by White. Still he goes there, tries oh, to bend it back. But he didn't bend it back far enough and it goes through for a behind. Actually, that was a marvellous passage of play. The quickness of White was see how he recovered and got across onto Minton Connell. And Minton Connell, that execution, look, he gets away. Well done, Minton Connell. What about this kick? Bad luck, but gee, it was a terrific passenger play. Cow kicks in. Well, that's a shocker. Oh. Absolute shocker. Kapler might cost them a goal. If Kicker can convert, no, he can't. It's an up and under job. It won't be a mark. Kapler's got it. Gives it quickly. Doreen. Hand pass. Creswell bends one back. Great right goal. Was the second honeymoon. Unbelievable. Day one, David's getting breakfast. Next thing, he's standing on the bed wearing nothing but the tray. Kate! Right. He trips, wrecks his knee, and we've got scrambled eggs from here to the Gold Coast. <laughs> Luckily, we've got Aussie Car Assist with the comprehensive insurance. They brought us back home from Queensland and they bought the car back. Aussie Assist sounds expensive. That's free. Well, what sort of insurance company does that? RACV Insurance. It's not just another insurance company. G'day, Romeo. You had to. <laughs> Melbourne work it forward. This is Obst. Across half forward. Swings it out wide, I think intended for Steins, wide of the mark. Schwartz is there, knocked away by Bayes across the line and out of bounds. Just a glorious day for football and watching football here in the Harbour City. I think he'll be watching, Dennis, not playing. I don't think I'd like to be playing out there today. Perth weather, Don. In front, <laughs> Steins. 
in trouble. Huskis held by the arm. Interesting hand pass as a result. And the umpire says throw it in. I'm with Schwartz. Yes. It's a boundary throw in just inside the 50. Fast start to this game. Steins props in front of Rose, wins it down. Opportunity for Dyson Hart against the line. Pulls it back for a more central location. All swans, though. Taken by McMahon. Caven. They've got the numbers. They'll run it away. This is McMahon from half back. Kicks through midfield. Good kick to Lewis came on the lead. Inside the center square. Spots kick it. Awkward half volley now. What can kick it make of this? 40 meters from goal. Pulls it back rather tentatively towards the middle. Missed down there by White. Mitten Connell didn't have it. Picked up by Dunkley. And Dunkley snaps, and I think he's missed. Not a bad effort, though, under pressure. Not the best of kicks normally. Certainly hard at the ball, Sydney, aren't they? Especially on that forward line. It could have been a free kick to Minton Connell, who was grabbed, didn't seem to have it. Umpire called play on. So halfway through the first quarter, they've opened at frenetic pace. And you would suggest that pretty hard to keep this up for the whole game. Plenty at stake oh. for both sides, and some kicking today. Uh, it's been pretty ordinary under the conditions. Creswell's got the mark. I think you've got to compliment Sydney. The way they line up for these kick-ins, they've really uh, got uh, Cal. Cal kicked in before, and they're really... He hasn't got too many options. Yeah, what's wrong with a long kick? Yeah, some enterprise. With the breeze, you just about get it to the centre of this ground. Anyway, Creswell goes at goal. He kicked a great snapshot, but that one is also there. So he's got two. Schwartz has got two for Melbourne. Well, he's, he's probably leading their best and fairest, Peter. Darren Creswell at Sydney. This is the last game, and here he is coming to chop it out. But watch the way he keeps his head over the ball as he's delivered. Bang, the head was directly over the ball. Didn't lift. Well executed. And I think that's a contact lens from Jason Daniels being... Uh, I'm telling you, and speaking from experience, in. when you lose one, you're in a lot of trouble. Melbourne by four points. Sydney, an opportunity to work it out. Smith missed it. This is Kapler. Their third centre break. Melbourne have got four as the ball goes down towards half forward. Pushed across the line by Matthew Phoebe. And it will be thrown in. That was Ian Law's excuse today. He got booked for whacking Murray Wiedemann. He said he didn't have his contact lenses and didn't see who he was hitting. <laughs> got off. Throw it on the outer side. Steins in front. Directs it down, but... Into the path of Rose, it was charged down, ricochets back to Higgins. His kick is blanketed, and across the line it goes again. Used to be able to say some unbelievable things at the tribunal, <laughs> <laughs> things you couldn't say nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> They're too widely reported these days, people would think you're a fool. <laughs> Held was Phoebe, Doreen knocked it wide, still he goes, close to the line. Across to Cresswell, who's been very busy. Hugs the boundary with a kick. Balandia takes it and goes. Centering attempt. Now watch kick it behind. He represents the danger. Goal. The crowd comes to life at the SCG as the Swans hit the front for the first time. Well, it looked a top contest and so far it's certainly living up to expectations. Tackle applied by McMahon. Ball jarred free again. He comes out with it. Spears the pass down to Philandia. As John said in her opening remarks, has been terrific for them this year. Lewis will give it back to him, the former bomber. Not the greatest of hand passes. Oh, Lewis, superb evasion. Kicks across his body, not a long kick. Tries to find Minton Connell. Melbourne with the numbers. Kapler, amazingly through there. That was touched off the boot, I think, or was it? No. Goal. Actually, he's been a real surprise up there early in this quarter, Kapler. He's figured prominently on a number of occasions they've gone forward and at that time he kicks his first goal but Lewis really casual gave the wrong hand pass back to Philandia then just luckily got himself out of trouble but here's Kapler White trying desperately to tackle but the ball quick snap for goal and through it rolls Golden by no doubt it was all clear so Darren Kapler gets his first and the Swans go further ahead it's 33 to 25 neither Ruckman reached the ball that time Kelly knocks it wide Charles emerges with it, hooks it inside the 50. In front is Gray, rides one bump, well played. The kick not particularly good. Awkward one there on the wing for Doreen. It's taken by Tenge, who hooks it back inside the 50. Gray the mark, though, plays on immediately. Has it crossed the ground. Rose couldn't control the half volley. 
manages to keep it in close to the line. Huskis, well, untidy handball that one. It's going to be an interesting battle between Steins and Rose because uh, Rose has played in a position, very mobile Ruckman, so is Steins. So you can see there, Rose had the ascendancy on that occasion. Jim was doing the chasing. They battle again, it falls behind, taken by Lovell. Gentle kick inside the 50. Lyon had to stand there and wait. Taken away by Charles. And Charles does what Kickett did at the other end. Charles making the difference. Less than a kick. Ten goals. Just past the halfway stage of the first quarter. Steins' hand pass. Just about ineffective. But Viney. Able to get a kick in. Goes out wide. Chasing out there is Hopgood. And still the boundary line looms as the main danger. Bay succeeds in taking him and the football over it in front of the Bill O'Reilly stand. Where they're enjoying the sunshine and presumably the football so far. It's been a terrific contest. 24 to 13, the handballs. In favour of Sydney. Rose up high, but it's a Melbourne ball. Tingo takes the hand pass at the back of the pack. Oh, oh he's great mark. He would have had to take that because it was almost in the back. And then Pike having a look at the umpire, Higgins. Huskis, who's been good. Kicks to half forward, wobbly punt kick. Primke. Hopgood. Take it away now by Darren Cowell, who's been kicking in a fair bit today from full back. Punch away not successful down there by Caven. Huskis and Lovell, and the ball out of bounds on the outer side. Right half forward for Melbourne. Seven minutes left in the first quarter. Scoreboard shows Sydney 5-3, Melbourne 5-1. Swans can get off the bottom if they win. Melbourne will get into the finals if they're victorious here this afternoon. Creswell, fresh air shot. Lovell kicks it barely the required distance. McMahon, bounce was a factor. Read it well. Gets it back up towards centre wing. Again, the Demons with numbers. Steins racing for it. There's the long and the short. Tackle applied down there by Philandia. Cowell, the hand pass. Lovell gets cannoned into by Smith. And it's going to be a bounce on centre wing. Sydney 5-3, Melbourne 5-1. Melbourne win today. They'll finish seventh. Everything to play for. Steins in front, gets it down. Lewis stood up in the tackle, taken by Biney. Kicks off one step down towards half forward. Short's got, Schwartz got a hand to it, taken by Higgins. Back to midfield. Pine bounce here for Sydney. Cresswell from about 40 metres out goes for home. It looks good. It's his third. What a start by Darren Creswell. 6 3 to 5 1. His third goal, Darren Creswell, and here's Higgins, who started on the half forward line, being picked up by Phoebe. Now at half back. A lucky bounce, but then again, Creswell taking advantage. And as I said, his third goal for the quarter. Well, just how many goals we're going to see here this afternoon. Ideal con uh, conditions for football. Eight points the difference. 11 goals scored in an incomplete first quarter so far. Tackled by Todd Viney. Smith taken out of the contest by a good uh, bump. Huskis kicks down towards half forward. Philandia giving chase. Great tackle applied by him on Cowell. Ball spills free in the tackle. Sydney possession. Dunkley looking for Minton Connell, who's outnumbered. Stephen Phoebe recovers, kick it there, it's going to be a free kick to Sydney. And Minton Connell's going to be the recipient of it. Or is it Dunkley? No, Minton Connell. Out of contract at the end of the year. I'd love to see him back in the red and white covers next season. Well. No comments from either of you two gentlemen. I must admit, didn't appear too much in that. No, I would have said play on, but then again. Minton Connell inside 50. Angle certainly a factor. Not a good attempt. Scrapes in barely from behind. So a golden opportunity missed by Simon Minton Connell. One goal, two in the first quarter to him. And Sydney go to 6 4. Melbourne 5 1. Difference of nine points. We've still got uh, problems with Daniel's contact lens or lenses. And we've still got five minutes to play in the first term. Phoebe kicks in this time, virtually straight down the middle. And from the side, the big leap from Neitz couldn't hang on. Still he goes, though, paddling it wide. 
They worked it pretty well. This is Schwartz now on the wing, kicking down towards half forward. Lions in front, almost a clever mark. Spilt behind now. Charles right on the 50. Open goal square, shocking kick. And it bounds on the full in the left full forward pocket. Some of the kicking has been atrocious. Even in the reserve grade game today, watching it, a lot of the kicking was atrocious. It's not just not up to standard. Tingay didn't touch the ball. It comes behind. McMahon goes close to the line. Valiant attempt down there at the mark. Missed by Philandia. Touched it. And we'll have a boundary throw in. Or will we? Lost the decision. I can't see yes, the boundary up by. Yes, right. So he's thrown it in. Over the top rows. Cal on the wing. Smothered by Doreen. Cal goes again through the legs of Rose. And the umpire whistles it up. 6 4 5 1. Free wheeling game this. Cal's up on the ball because of the fact that Philandy is now on the ball. Sydney bench. Steins directs it down. At his feet was Viney kicking towards half forward. Smith got a timely fist in there. Higgins couldn't control it. Hopgood's got it now. The space in front of Lyon at full tilt. Good kick. Quick, there's a quick option on if he can get him, and that is Matthew Phoebe. Matthew Phoebe, Gary Lyon, but a little slow. No, let him take the shot, Don. 60 goals this season. 24 in the last five games for Melbourne. They're down by nine points. And now I fancy the margin is back to three. Gary Lyon gets the goal. Well, as Dennis mentioned, he's kicked goals in the last few weeks, Gary Lyon. Because of the fact that he's now playing up in that uh, full forward position. <laughs> There's a doubt for one by Higgins, wasn't it? Mm. Good mark to Lyon. He was never going to drop that. Leading out well. And he's filled in admirably with Alan Jakovic on the sidelines. His first goal. Difference back to three points at the SCG. 40 plays 37. And under four minutes left in the opening term. Lovett's kick taken by Obst. Also off the ground. Chance for Smith. Tackled by Andy Lovell. Cannons into his back. Charles tries to break clear. I think this fellow will make a player. Smith, I've been impressed with him. He's got a little bit of dirt in him. Looks like, uh, to look uh, at him, David Reese jones hasn't he? A little bit dunkly. Dunkley's kick. That's a bit in distance. Sean White with the gloves. Be warm wearing them this afternoon. Dyson back to Obst, who's been at everything so far. Charles in front. Should mark and does on right centre wing. That's a good kick. Excellent kick, looking for Schwartz and finds him. One of the best kicks of the day. And Schwartz in the perfect position for that. Used his height to great advantage, took a fine mark. And over the top of Peter Caven. A little bit further out than Gary Lyon was a few minutes back. But a kick here will restore the lead for Melbourne. Close to the boundary line. That oh. looks pretty good. It's a goal. He's threaded it. Melbourne back in front. Well, we've got two players that have both kicked three goals in the first quarter. Sydney have got Creswell and Melbourne have got Schwartz. That was a good build-up. A little bit, again, of loose play by uh, Higgins because that uh, is Higgins' man, Sean Charles. And Higgins was nowhere to be seen. And he quickly relayed the ball down. So Higgins has really caused, I believe, two goals to be scored for Melbourne. Great goal by Schwartz. How about this first term? Still two and a half minutes to go. 13 goals already. Wide of the pack, Viney. Tingay goes down towards half forward. Pike gathers the bouncing ball. Accelerates well. About 70 metres from another goal. Another kick. very poor kick. Thank you, Don. It bounces out of bounds. Up from the pocket. As I mentioned, Dennis, the reserves were doing it as well. A lot of players in the reserves were kicking badly too. Throw in. Pike in front, hooks it down behind. Lovett fell over. Dyson tries to crash his way through. Here's Lyon back to goal, spins around, snaps. How will it bounce? The wrong way that time. And behind. At the other end, we saw Sydney get a kind bounce. The wrong end. That was the traditional leg break to the right-hander. And the behind there for Gary Lyon. The lead is out to four points now. 
Peter Caven. Some indecision. That goes for distance. In front is Lovett. Didn't touch the ball. Over the top rows. Back to Lovett, though. With all the time in the world, measures the hand pass. Flips it away to Viney. 70 metres from goal, Viney. In the square alone is Pike. Well, how did that happen? Pike getting in behind the defence quite remarkably. This was over the value of a quick kick into the forward line, a quick long kick into the forward line. Runs around and gets the goal. So Melbourne are 8-2, Sydney are 6-4, and this is the best first term this season by the Demons. Well, Pike has made that transition from defence to the forward line. He kicked two goals last week. He's done some strong work. He laid a really heavy bump on the outer, on the outer wing earlier, and here he is, no one in Cooey. Mm. Could have gone on, but made sure of it by going back. Martin Pike's first goal, still a minute and a half to go, and 14 goals in the first quarter. Eight by Melbourne, and their best lead so far, 14. And Kelly, I guess say 14 points. Still time for Sydney to get another one. Melbourne with this slight breeze, if it is a factor. That one stands up a little bit into the breeze. Neeks underneath it, kick it at the back. Can he kick the goal? 35 metres out, our oh, shocking kick. Sean White gets a glove to it and knocks it out of bounds. Well, Sydney have made a change. They had Bays on Pike. Now they're making the move once again of Schwartz. Bays going back onto Schwartz. Boundary Cave, throw. Sorry, Cave has got the job on Pike. It's in Sydney's left forward pocket. Steins up at the back. Matthew Phoebe. Primke dispossessed and gives away the hand pass again. Kicker tries to intercept it. Neitz comes at him. Kapler, I think it is on the bottom. Gang tackle down there. Viney's got him. And it's going to be a bounce. Good hassling work by Sydney to retain that ball in the forward line. 15 metres out from their goal. They need one here. Steins and Rose. Knocked on by Stephen Phoebe. Creswell dispossessed. Did he have the football in the end when he was tackled? Kick away by Matthew Phoebe. That might be the final uh, hope for Sydney gone. Smith, a quick kick. They need to mark it. They will. Dunkley directly in front as the clock ticks down. So this will probably be the last kick of the quarter. Good effort by Smith. A strong youngster. He's got real potential. I had that word potential. Can sometimes be an excuse for inefficiency potential. He kicks it goal. Oh, See, as soon as he delivered that boot. Out of bounds on the full, so no score. And at quarter time, it will be Sydney still 6 4 40, and the Demons with a 10 point advantage, 8 2 50 at the SCG. And what a quarter of football at the SCG. 14 goals kicked in the opening term. David Schwartz has three for Melbourne, and Darren Creswell has three for the Sydney Swans. The Demons by 10 points as we go down to the boundary line. Neil Cordy. Yes, Peter, there's just a little bit of a breeze springing up now at the moment, which will favour the end that the Swans are kicking to this quarter, which is a relief to uh, to most of the players because it, because it has been very, very warm down here on the ground. But uh, it's been, I'd, if, as far as the... Uh, the Melbourne supporters would go. I'd say that they'd still be a little bit nervous the way that the Swans have started uh, this game and, and they, they seem to be setting up very well in the forward line and the mobility of their key forwards of Schwartz and Lyons seem to be causing them major problems. Now, just before you go, any news on Jason Daniels? Did he lose a contact lens or what was the problem? He did. He lost. He had He had a finger in the eye and lost one of his contact lenses, so they had to go back to his kit, and, uh, but he's fine now. OK, he can come back. That's OK. Ron yep. Barassi leaving the ground. And, uh, well, Don Scott, 14 goals. What a quarter. Yes, it was, Peter, and um, I thought it'd go that way, the way they started. And it was interesting that quarter time that Neil Baum had a word to his defenders, got them as a group and obviously talking about something that they were doing. But um, a couple of bad mistakes, I think, let Melbourne in at the last bit. Sydney looked like they could go on with it, but Higgins across half back, a couple of one the handball and also the looseness on Charles resulted directly in handball and they've got to really concentrate Sydney if they're going to keep in this game and what can we glean from those stats well Melbourne were really down as far as handballs go at one stage of the uh, the contest but uh, stats rather even 
set of breaks. There's not much in it, really. As would be indicated by the score, 10 points in favour of Melbourne. A win for the Demons today puts them into the finals. And the Swans can get off the bottom if they're victorious here today, which would be their third win in a row against Melbourne after winning earlier in the year at the MCG. And their only win here last year at the SCG. Start of the second quarter. Steins and Rose. Bounce favours Steins. Rose up high, knocks it down. Beautiful tear away by Kelly. That could almost be a goal. Plenty of distance in the kick, but he's kicked it out of bounds on the full. And again, the value of the long kick here at the SCG. And uh, as Neil told us, a little bit of a breeze has sprung up, favouring the end to which the Swans are kicking in this quarter. I think a change has also been made. I thought uh, Viney had the job on Criswell, but Criswell's now going with Obst. Uh, Stephen Phoebe's kick out to the centre wing position. Brunton onto the ground for the first time. Well, he'll get the distance. Kelly, no doubt about that. Great kick, low trajectory, drop punch for a goal. And talking about that man, Viney, that's his opponent, if that's correct. He's got a couple of easy balls, Paul Kelly. He got it out of the centre earlier. And here's the handball from Brunton. Oh, I should have said the, the hand pass. Well, the foot kick. I'll try again. The kick. Paul Kelly, the skipper. Six possessions so far. Just under 20 minutes till half time. So Sydney doing all the attacking to start this second quarter. And Kelly in the thick of the action again. The meat and the sandwich is getting a free kick. I'm not too sure why, but obst the offender, it seems. So Kelly squares this ball, waiting for it on the Ooh. other side. A long time, too, was McMahon. Eventually plays on to Creswell. Creswell goes down towards the 50. Kick it camped in front. Phoebe over the top. It spills free for Landia. Confronted, gets the hand pass to Brunton, who concedes some ground. Back to Creswell. Having a wonderful game so far. Already three goals. Down towards the pocket. It bounces obligingly for Primke. Sends it back towards the outer side wing. Some jostling. And oh, Creswell no. takes the mark, but he's been penalised. Just thought he used his body well then. Hopgood to get the free. Hopgood goes down towards half forward. Pike pushed under the ball, I thought. He's going to get a free kick against Caver. Pike left half forward. That should be 50. The man came from behind the mark. McMahon. But he played on, hadn't he, Dennis? Well, well, obviously, the umpire hadn't called it, Pete, mm. so... Yeah, that was unfortunate because he didn't mean to do that. He was just running in direction, and what actually happened was that Pike came across to the right. So how about this for moving the ball? Free kick. Two free Another kicks. one. And a 50, yeah. Yeah, and a 50. So Pike from 25 metres out. Kicks and kicks, truly. So really a gimme goal for the D's. Two frees and a 50 metre penalty. You can't get it much easier than that. Oh, great tackle by McMahon. Buried his opponent there. Neitz gives away the hand pass. Too many of them. It's come undone. Stein's grab. Ball spills free. Kelly again burrows in on the bottom of the pack. Tingo and Matthew Phoebe go in. Tingo comes out with a football. Left footer across his body to half forward. Strong mark by Gray. Who plays on it is caught by Lovett. Great tackle. Holding the ball. Terrific tackle. Been watching the uh, Tony Liberatore school of tackling, I think. He was going nowhere, tried to beat him, and was penalised. Tingo now with the football. Looks for Schwartz, couldn't find him. Pike is there, can he kick another one? Right foot snap, terrific goal! Great shot! It's uh, third. He's not very fashionable, Pike, but he certainly is effective. His third goal. Strong, as I mentioned, a strong player playing across half forward, deep in the forward line as Lyons gone up the ground. Good effort by um, Tingay there to get it down to that forward line. So the margin out to 16 points now. It got to 19 for Melbourne early in the first term, but Sydney came storming back. They need to be careful here. Centre square infringement, and it's going Melbourne's way. So all the pieces of the puzzle falling into place for the Demons. 
Steins goes down towards half forward. Very high kick. Bayes was in front initially. Schwartz came over the top and forced to find me in trouble. Tengay's over the ball now, tries to spin out. Melbourne have got the numbers around the ball. This is Hopgood, 60 metres from goal. Two on one situation down in the pocket. And the one did pretty well. That was Gray. Got the ball across the boundary line. Lyon just couldn't hang on to that one. Viney going with Doreen now. Ops on Kelly. And Throw Creswell in. picking up Hopgood. Here's Lyon. They stay off him initially. Took a long time to develop right there, and now the umpire wants it. Like slow motion. Lyon had it. No one willing to tackle. Oh, umpires he today. He can hurt himself a little slow getting up. Steins and Rose, they go body to body. They fought a draw that time. Cresswell knocked it away from himself, looking for a free kick. Pretty hectic in there. And the umpire calls for it again. Kelly getting an early goal in this term. Talk about incentive as far as Melbourne are concerned, but of course the Swans looking to get off the foot of the table. They've been there for the past 14 weeks. Love it to Viney. Confronted. Interesting kick. It slides out very wide. Tingay about 55 metres from goal. The defence was solid. It stood up pretty well. Brutton was slow to get rid of the ball, though. The kick comes across the ground from Phoebe. It runs towards the boundary line. Rose, who's pretty athletic, and so Stein's behind him. This will be interesting. Well, Rose pushes it across the line, so... He negated any chance of Stein's getting the ball. Well, for that matter, his team, and we'll have a boundary throw in. And Sydney fans still incensed after those decisions. Cost them a goal by Pike earlier. One of two that he's kicked in this quarter. Steins flips it to Obst. Back to Steins. He's caught. Good tackle. Higgins. Charles close to the boundary line. He's kicking well. Down towards full forward. And Pike has it fisted away by Andrew Dunkley. Dunkley in fringe, actually, putting the arm around Pike. No free kick, though. He would want to give another one against Sydney on Melbourne's forward line. I think they'd pull the grandstand down. Boundary throw it. Demons right forward pocket. 16 points in Melbourne's favour. Bays gets front position. Uh, Schwartz beats him to it. Obst. Oh, good hand pass. Pike kicks his third for the quarter. Golden Park feeling a little sore. But... Melbourne skipping away. Sydney got the first goal of the term. Melbourne the last three. The umpire calls for it again. Very hard there on the cricket pitch area in the middle. As a result, it should bounce pretty high, and it does, and the Ruckman up very early. Steins couldn't control it. Charles has been handy. Boots it out wide. Well controlled by Lewis. Hooks it down towards half forward. Caven, stretching, takes the mark. He's about 75 metres from goal. Back to Lewis. Unnecessary, really. The kick not particularly good either. Palandia surrounded. Look at that. Four Melbourne players around him. Palandia had nowhere to go. And is penalised for holding the ball. Well, that's a tough decision because he was across the boundary line for quite a lengthy time towards the end of that trip. He's grim-faced. Phoebe's got the ball. An umpire with no compassion. There goes Phoebe. From half back towards the wing. Bays and Schwartz, it falls beside them. Kapler stood his ground, wishes he hadn't. Taken highs as the umpire. Crowd love it. The Swans get a free. They trail by 22 points at the moment. Here's Kapler. On this glorious day, goes down towards half for Taylor made for kick it. Well, he didn't read it too well. He was up very early. Close to the boundary line. Obst content to run it across. And it will be thrown in. So Sydney have what breeze there is. But they've fallen off the pace here. Another 11-2, Sydney 7-4. Another change by Sydney. Higgins is now playing on Tingay on the wing. And picking up Charles is um, Lovell, Andy Lovell. No, it's not. Caven kicks it back towards Minton Connell off his hands and through for a rush behind to the Sydney Swans. And they will take anything they can get at the moment. 7-5 to 11-2. Now, hang on. Don's Mark, magnetic yes. board is just blowing up here. <laughs> That's right. You know, it's all the 16 that I literally the... thought of Lovell, but it's McMahon picking up Charles. Well, there's number 11. I think that's Jimmy Steins. Without cap. Warm enough to wear one. Tingay, has he got it inside the line? Yes, just. Love it was the target. He'll pick it up now. Tackled by Brunton. Gray. Badly directed pass intended for Gary Lyon. It was about three metres underneath it. Rose 
with left half back for Sydney. Athletic to half forward. Melbourne with the numbers. Creswell, gee, that might be a free kick. Umpire says no. Play continues. Ox breaks away from midfield. He's had a terrific game so far. See, that was almost a drop kick. Gary Lyon marks it at right half forward. Against this little breeze, maybe too far out to score, 60 to 65 metres. Puts it out in front. Big leap by Lovett. Dunkley. Bays gets the bounce that he wanted. Longest kick in the side, probably. A couple of bounces. Well, he's lost it on the second one. Primke gives it away to Tingay. He gives it back to Lovett, who marks in front of Brunton. So a bad turnover there. Barassi won't be happy with that. Charles the sit can't take the mark. Almost on the shoulder to McMahon. Pike taken out of the contest. Good hip and shoulder there. Gray went without it. Smith looking for a free kick. The umpire will bounce it. 15 metres out from Melbourne's goal. 12 minutes left in the half. What Bayes did then was what a lot of reserve great players were doing. The ground obviously very treacherous. They can't change direction quickly. Charles's hand pass was good. Viney snapshot not quite as good. And it's either up behind or out of bounds on the full. It's out on the full. Free kick in the left back pocket for the Swans. Dunkley gives it away to Philandia, who's been good so far. Philandia across the ground, the mark taken by Rose. He's up from the back pocket, swings it wide as still. Brunton has to wait, takes a good grab. Love it closing on him. Brunton flicks it across to Philandia, who's run on. Around the other side, he goes close to the boundary line, pulls it back towards centre half forward. Kick it comes on the lead and takes a good grab. Colliding with Viney, picks up the ball and wants to go. Allowed to. Doreen right in the middle now. Minton Connell on the lead. It's a good passage of play. There are players on the move all the time. Doreen was on the move, kick it, kick the ball to him. And Minton Connell was on the move before Doreen really had got the ball, anticipating, hence he got away from White. He's got one already. His nine goals against Fitzroy back in round five. The best effort by any player in a losing side this season. He's had a pretty good year. A few injury problems. Important kick this one. The margin is out to 21 points. This to pull it back. No. It starts right and hangs right and sneaks in for a behind. One goal three. 7-6 plays 11-2. Demons kicking accurately. Cowell, that's better. Finds White, who was thinking about going on. Huska sneaking up behind him. Here's Tinge, who's playing better this afternoon after a quiet one last week against the Bulldogs. Phoebe at half back goes to Viney. Inside it comes to Cowell, confronted by Kick. Good run tackling. down from behind. Huska's got him, or was it Doreen? Doreen applied the tackle. Good pressure by Sydney. A chance for Rose. Neitz has got it though, swings it out wide and Melbourne have got two, they're like twins this pair. This is Hopgood, he's 60 metres from goal, pulls it back for Charles, beautiful kick. Well, he had so much time there Hopgood, he didn't waste his second of it. He assessed it pretty well, Lyon was dropping back and Lyon sensed his man was following him. Charles was free. Watch this again as it develops. He looks up and that was very well played. Charles has been busy so far. Kicks. And I think he's got it. That's fantastic. Thank you. Huskus was the player that went off for Jason Daniels' return. And the scoreboard not looking good now for Sydney. And should we say Richmond fans as well. They need to get a rattle on the Swans. Melbourne putting in a pretty good quarter. Pikes dominated it up forward. Free kick, a holding decision going against Melbourne. And Darren Creswell's going to take the free kick. It's to the delight of the Sydney fans in front of us. He's gone out wide. Philandia. Clear of Stein. Lewis on a lead. Marks in front of Primke. Too far out to score. So looking for options. Dale Lewis. Brunton is on his own. Not a bad kick, Lewis, but I think this would be too far for him. He's looking for options, Pete. Yes. Kepler. Oh, good one, too. Yes. Let out in front of Kevin Dyson. He's not a bad kick, Darren Kepler. Especially on the run. To say Sydney needs a goal here would be the understatement of the afternoon. 7 6 to 12 2. Great kicking by Melbourne. That's not a bad sort of an effort either. 
Jonathan Fire says four points. Well, they needed that, the Swannies. Darren Kaplan gets his second in Sydney's eighth, 8-6 eight, to 12-2. So the difference back to 20 points now after Sydney trailed by 10 points at quarter time. And they were very indirect in their passage to goal then, but at least they maintained possession. And Darren Kaplan has had an excellent year. Kicks his second goal. Former best and fairest at uh, Fitzroy. Before coming to Sydney. Melbourne lead it by 20 points now as the time remaining. Steins and Rose, one down by Steins directly to Philandia though. Philandia kicks inside the 50. Kelly props in front is knocked down towards him. He may have been better advised to go for a mark there, Kelly. He's tied up and the umpire will ball it up. Looking to do the team thing, but that ball fell in a little short and surprised the players behind him. Kelly goes again. Quite a few of them getting in there. Kelly's at the base of all of that. And the umpire wants it. Carl signalling the bench. Bounce about 40 metres out from the Swans attacking goal. Rose and Steins go at it again. Obster's got it. Wrestle to the ground. And once more the umpire will intervene. So interesting time there. Sydney not done with yet. They're sticking. And I suppose their supporters... And Richmond supporters can take consolation from the fact that in three of their four victories this season, they trailed at half time. Here's Phoebe, swings it wide. Lewis <laughs> needed a good bounce, it ran away from him out of bounds. So a throw in about 60 metres from Sydney's attacking goal. And it's been a goal scoring orgy so far. Melbourne have got 12, Sydney have got eight. Caven off, what is on? Pike four, Schwartz three, Presswell three. And the ball goes out of bounds on the full. Melbourne to take the result and free. Matthew Phoebe wanting to go. Now he checks and looks downfield. Lyon offers a lead. Steins is there as well. Gray pushed off Lyon unfairly, I thought. Lyon's going to get the free kick. The champ, the defensive side of right centre wing. Looking to spark his side here. They'd like to pull away and make it easy for themselves this afternoon with an eye towards next week. This is Viney. So many possessions this season, more than any other Melbourne player. Kicks down towards half forward. It falls behind Schwartz in traffic. That's holding the ball, surely. Uh, the umpire in the wrong position just couldn't see, but he's paid dropping the ball anyway. That is the most belated decision I've ever seen. Yes. Took about 10 minutes. Schwartz had actually dropped the ball. <laughs> Out of disinterest, I think, when the umpire decided to make a decision. That was remarkable. Well, he should have paid actually holding the ball, but the umpire in the wrong position on that occasion. A wall of players, hence he couldn't see Schwartz. Well, he made no decision until very late, Doc. No decision is no decision. Matthew Phoebe goes hard at it. It's out of bounds again. Seven minutes left in the quarter. Paul Kelly gets himself up. Well, the Swannies are giving everything here. I'll stick with them. Melbourne will, to win this contest. I'll have to do it the hard way. Daniels tackle on Ops. Dines gives away the hand pass. Comes back to Matthew Phoebe. Kicks towards the edge of the square. Love it underneath it. Kick by Brunton is high. Travels only about 15 metres. Steins grab. Ball hits the deck again. Once more Matthew Phoebe. Onto his left. Centering kick. Treswell underneath it. Gutsy mark. Onto Bays. He won't bounce it this time. 25 metre hand pass. Finds Brunton again. Away he goes. He could just about kick a goal. No one coming at him. 40 metres out. Kicks it goal and puts it through. What a beauty. So the Swans have got the last two goals and they're back in touch. It's only 14 points the difference now. Press will drag off the kick. Matthew Phoebe. Hand passes up in the air. Taken by Higgins on his right boot. He hooks it down towards half forward in front out there for Landia. Having a good term. Kelly is on over the top. Kelly's got the ball now at right half forward. Mitten Connell offers the lead. Now he drops back towards the pack. Contests. Got hands to it. White tries to knock it away. Primke's got it now. Gets rid of kick it. And they'll bring it away. The kick comes from Neitz. It's not particularly good. The Swans two on one. Presswell from 50 goes oh, in his fourth. Oh. It's bending back. Has it got the carry? I think it has. Here come the Swans. Well, he's having a day out there in Creswell as far as the goals go. He kicked three in the first quarter. He's kicked four for the game. 
It's a great kick for goal. They're just there it is from just on 50, maybe 48 meters. Well done. Breeze just helping it through the last meter and a half. Back to the centre, Darren Creswell gets his fourth goal, and a ripper it was. Game comes to light again. Scotty Waters' first possession. Back to Bayes. Excellent smother. It was uh, St uh, Matthew Phoebe. who got a little kick away again. Bayes once more. What's he going to do this time? Funny old hand pass. Effective to Daniels. Offloads it again to Bayes. Or Rose, solid shepherd on Charles behind play. Completely legit, though. Melbourne comes away again. Kick away comes from Hopgood. Back to Matthew Phoebe. Obst who's been terrific oh, this afternoon, strike. centering kick to Stein, Stein's marks inside 50. Bradlow medalist, short pass Gary Lyon, good stuff. And Lyon would just about kick this. Breeze certainly a factor now, remembering that last kick of Creswell's, which brought up his fourth goal. But Lyon, one of the longest kicks in the side, should go pretty close from there. Love a lot, love a lot too, Peter Hilton on for Melbourne. It's going to be close. I think he's got it. He has. It's a goal. Great kick, Gary Lyon. And when they need something, he usually provides it. He's kicked two goals, two out of Melbourne's tally of 13-2. And two behinds kick from the skipper. Interesting. Well, this is obviously a great vision here, Obst. Finding Steins. And Steins, in turn, the chip. And Lyon. A real pressure player is Gary Lyon. And Melbourne, uh, Sydney tagging, actually. Uh, Hopgood's uh, running with Philandia when he goes in the forward pocket, and Kelly and Cowell are on one another. Both defences really struggling. Here's Viney. Oh, McMahon, out of the road in the nick of time. Daniels arches the back and gets away. Goes across the ground. Lewis, awkward bounce. Primke waiting behind him. And now Lovett, about 80 metres from goal. Goes long down towards Schwartz. He's surrounded. Over the top came Bays. Grabbed in there by Gray, clears the zone, at least for the moment. Well, well done. done, McMahon. Spinning out of trouble. Tried to release Higgins, he lost it. Goes back and finds it. This is Smith, deep in his own defensive area. High kick towards the wing. Phoebe, good grab. Eyes only for the ball. Doreen was coming back on him. Steve Phoebe judged it well. Tingay, shocking kick. Oh. Out of bounds on the full. The kicking today on occasions has been terrible. Well, the idea was right, Dennis. He was looking for Matthew Phoebe, but uh, the execution a little poor. Daniel's a high one towards the wing. Kelly from behind launched himself. Doreen close to the boundary line. Fast running out of space. Got it to Kelly. Kelly stood his ground well. Fit it back towards Cresswell. Back it comes to Kelly. Kelly well played. In a confined space, they did well. But then Higgins kicks wide of the mark. Kick it, kicks the fence. And the ball's out of bounds. And the reason Higgins kicked it badly, he copped a bad bump and I think is still winded by the time he took the kick. And you can see a little bit of blood on the right side of his face. So he may have to go off or receive attention. And for that reason, there's a trainer out to him now. Steins. Stephen Phoebe. High kick. Barely travels 10 metres. 10 up and 10 down. Gets it again. And this is one of the blondes. Hopgood. It'll be Hopgood. Thank you. Love it. Lyon. McMahon late on the scene. No 50 metres. Charles is on his by himself, Peter. He's calling for it. I don't think Lyon has seen him. Lyon should get the distance from there. He's going back. Looks for a couple of metres. And kick one not long back. Similar distance out, but directly in front. Oh, a pretty good sort of an effort. Look at that. Oh. Great kick. Now, is there a mark? Pike got it, or is it through? No, I think there's a mark. Pike has been paid the mark. He's right on the boundary line. He's whistling now, mark Sydney Bay's haven't back. Woke, has Sydney haven't woken up to this. What he's going to do is run on like there. He did. Kicks a goal and gets it. Margin 20 points. Just over two and a half minutes till half time. Just goals, goals and more goals. In trouble there, Hopgood bounces off one opponent, kicks towards half forward, but the mark is held in front by McMahon. He goes out wide. Philandia constantly getting free on that outer side, chips it down towards half forward. The Hughes, mark is held by Creswell. Hughes is back on for Sydney. Creswell just forward of the wing. Sydney needing a late goal. He kicks towards the 50. Steins in the road, as easy as you like. Obst is on in the middle. 
Obst has got it now. Drops the mark. Has to work. Slaps it towards Dyson. Dyson quick hands away to Lovett. Lovett towards half forward Pike. His confidence really starting to flow now. Five goals in the first half in a very important game. He'd be loving this. Pike down towards half forward. Indicates he'll go for distance. Setting it up for Schwartz, but Schwartz won't get there in time. The son of factor, McMahon, in trouble initially, did pretty well. Lays it off to Bays. Bays comes back towards the middle. Kelly at full stretch. Missed it. Cowell, a look away hand pass. Dyson inside the centre square. Well, strange old kick out towards the boundary. Well done by Pike. Three on one situation. Lyon backs away. Goes for the short one. Charles like a base runner going to second in front of Phoebe. Matthew Phoebe that was. Held a long time in the tackle. Charles is twisting and turning. But the ball will come back to Phoebe M. And he'll take this kick from about 60 metres out. Matthew Phoebe kicks into the pocket again. A funny old kick. Brunton had his hands on it. Couldn't take it. Now Schwartz. Good tackle down there by uh, Daniels. It's out of bounds. Smith has it. Great shepherd. One minute left. So the Swans need to man up in the last 60 odd seconds to keep Melbourne out. Gray knocks it down. Brunton goes for the boundary line. Love it. Well shepherded. Daniels has got him. Ball jarred free in the tackle. Comes back to Viney. It's out of bounds on the fall. Yours, Don. <laughs> so Smith is going to take it. Or Daniels, probably Smith. He'd be a better kick. That is a good kick. Gets it up the centre wing. Kapler rides one bump, feeds out the hand pass to Waters on the run. He started on the bench. Nice balk from the former Eagle. Gets it down towards left forward pocket. White got two hands to it in front of Mitchell. Oh, what a hand pass! Oh, look at this. Away goes Derek Kicker and closing one minute out and kicks it. Great goal. Explosive speed and a hand pass before that. And Derek Kickett gets Sydney's 11th. They trail now by 14 points. Well, what a smart handball from the full forward. Running out of options there, Scotty Waters. But here it is. Watch Minton Connell. Cool. Was that quick? Really very, very good. Nobody around. And Derek goes into an open goal. His second, Derek Kickett. Dying seconds of the first half, Stein slaps it down. Daniels went at the ball hard, taken by Phoebe. The hand pass not particularly good. Rose is in the road. 20 seconds till half time now. Daniels appear to be holding on and then pushed in the back. Hopgood slides in on his knees, gives it to Viney. Viney swings it wider. Steins, good evasion by the big man. We're down to 10 seconds. Obst controlled it very well. He's 70 metres from goal. They need to mark this. We're down to five seconds. They won't. It runs free behind. Brunton, Pike, oh, I'd say after the siren, yes, the umpire heard the siren before the ball was kicked, no score, Pike going at his sixth there, he's had a very good first half, five already on the board and so close to number six, it's half time at the SCG and the Demons 14-2, that's right, 14 goals and only two behinds to half time and Sydney 11-6. It's been a game of fluctuating fortunes, the old cliche, but certainly these sides have done their scoring in little thickets. Well, Melbourne has made the most of its forward opportunities. They've had more of the ball on their forward line. And the interesting part about the Melbourne scoreline is the only two behinds have been kicked by their captain, Gary Lyon, who's booted 2-2. Two -two. So we'll take a break from the SCG. The umpire's not the most popular people here. It's 86-72. to 72. And welcome back to the SCG at halftime. Very high scoring affair, 25 goals scored so far. And the difference in favour of Melbourne at halftime, 14 points. Martin Pike has five goals for the Ds. Darren Criswell, four for the Swannies. This match is part of the Fosters 1994 AFL Premiership season. Pretty interesting quarter scoreboard at half time, Don. A very high scoring affair. Sydney not out of it, but just at the moment, Melbourne, too many good options up forward. Well, you say that, and also they're kicking, I suppose we should mention that too. But uh, that was rather even as far as goal or points scored in that second quarter. But Melbourne, as you say, maybe they, they look a little more dangerous, don't they? Have a couple mm. more options up there. But it's a good game. I like the pressuring around uh, the midfield and uh, Sydney not overawed it's been you know Sydney looked like they were going to come back Melbourne then came back and uh, 
Tingo has lifted himself after a quiet one last week. And Pike, what a purple patch is he having? He's kicked four goals. He's kicked five the, goals. Well, four in the second yeah. quarter. Could have had six for the match. Well, Only just, seconds in it, wasn't it? And Hopgood also is impressed, especially that second quarter. This is a good kick. He spots uh, Charles. Yes, it was Charles. But he's been given a bit of latitude. One by McMahon, who's now his opponent. Also Higgins in the first quarter. Lewis been in and out, but he's got a lot of skill, Lewis. And they went very indirectly here. They got the ball in the centre, then they went right out to that outer flank. And there's a pressure goal here by Kepler, and a good one. Not a Melbourne player touched that ball from the time it was bounced down in the centre. The Sun, a problem, and Doreen, uh, not Doreen, but Creswell has been an excellent player. And here he goes for four bounces. Creswell involved, he's been involved on the scoreboard, also down around the ground too. And as I mentioned through commentary, could win the best and fairest here at Sydney. He's had an excellent season. Neats. This is chopped out by Creswell, who from just on 50, maybe a step inside 50, bangs for goal. He likes kicking them around the corner, snapshots like that, because he's kicked a few goals like that today. Well, the crowd's certainly getting their money's worth. Sydney trying to avoid the wooden spoon, and they can if they win, and the D is going for that spot in the final so uh, it's a great game isn't it well, it is, i think this is a matter of who's the fittest because what looking at those players that they came off this weather is certainly a factor here let's let check the uh, stats now don and these are for the second quarter well they're all rather even when we looked at them at the end of the first quarter and what can we look at there certainly maybe, more kicks to melbourne and maybe that melbourne term. as far as our possessions go a little bit more but interesting one there is centre breaks. Uh, Sydney eight to four because that was rather even at, um, at, at first quarter in the first quarter. Okay, thank you, Don. Pretty interesting game at half time, as we said, under fairly warm conditions. Let's spend a minute now with Melbourne's David Schwartz. And this was my footy hero as a Hawthorne supporter and. It wasn't a keen rap for Jacko. Yeah, I thought he was an idiot, so a bit, uh, bit uh, too flamboyant for my liking. Uh, I guess playing my first senior game was a disappointment. I played um, against West Coast in Perth and we got flogged by about 90 points, but uh, yeah, definitely a thrill. I like Tim the Toolman Taylor, home improvements, definitely. Oh, they just call me Schwarter. So uh, just simple because of my last name. Probably Jacket because he doesn't shut up about himself. I thought Buddha, Buddha Hocking from the start and I also like Ashley McIntosh. We're at the SCG. Play due to resume in just a few moments time. Let's go down to the boundary now and uh, Neil Cordy. Peter, that uh, breeze that we were speaking about at uh, it's a quarter time seems to have freshened up a little bit, so I'd say Melbourne would be looking to really capitalise on, on that advantage that they'll have this quarter and try and put it to bed right now. Yes, looking at the flags up above the grandstand next to us, I can agree with you, Neil. So this is the make-or-break quarter for the Demons. If they can get a good break going into the final term, I don't think uh, they'd be getting off the hook from there. Jason Norrish now on for Melbourne. There he is right in the centre of the ground. Number 25. Andy Love is still on the bench. Higgins is actually on the bench too for Sydney. Yes, Higgins got that uh, knock late in the second quarter. I mentioned he was a bit proppy. And uh, maybe he's not quite 100%. Jim Stein's in the ruck. For Melbourne as we start the third quarter of the SCG the Demons leading by 14 points it was 10 points at quarter time 25 goals scored in the match so far Steins wins the first hit out not decisively enough to clear the zone and it's going to be a bounce just five meters away from the circle An interesting matchup Kelly whether he's playing in the center but he's been picked up by Lovett Criswell and Viney now picking up one another and Norrish and Waters so it's interesting in midfield changes being Swung all the time there. Yeah. It's all in for this bounce. Steins and Rose. Huskis had it, lost it. Kick away by Creswell. Mark taken by Stephen Tingay. And he looked as though he was off. Onto his left foot. Out towards half forward. And the mark is taken by Norris, as Don said, onto the ground for the first time. First possession. 
with the breeze at his back into the goal square chance for a demon goal here Pike again in the thick of things and Hilton also on showing Smith at the bottom of that pack a little bit of a wrestle down there and his name is a forward for Southern in the under, under 18 competition last year a big strong leg I think he's got a future so a bounce Gray up in front of Lyon spirals the punt kick doesn't get too much distance with it punch away by Steins Hand pass comes to Lovett from a standing start. Kicks into the right forward pocket. Bounce a factor here. Oh, great mark, Charles, or is it out? Boundary umpire says OK. McMahon will stand the mark. Sean Charles, first shot at goal in the third quarter. And this was very, very close. And you can see here, just grabs it inside the line. He's got in short. No mark taken out in front of goal, and once again the umpire will ball it up. Well, he tried that banana kick, he held the ball in the correct angle, but uh, just didn't make contact properly, hence, it really didn't get off the ground at all. It looked like a short pass to the front of the square. 14 2 to 11 6, Melbourne in front. They only have to win to make the finals. Schwartz knocks it down, Charles is in there, applies a tackle. And the ball up, there's Mark Bays, base of the pack. What a fine player he's been over the seasons for the Sydney Swans. Former best and fairest winner. Schwartz, intelligent place to put it, back towards the goal face. Gray stood up in the tackle, Doreen gets it away, Daniels. Good run out of defence for Sydney. This is Huskis up through the middle. A second bounce. Passes the centre circle. And then had the kick smothered. Well, I'm not sure about bad luck. It came towards Norris. Well done by Matthew Phoebe to smother. Lovett sold Lyon into trouble. Tackled by Kapler. Lovett did well. Knocked it to Hilton, who can go over the top to Charles. Elected not to. Kicks instead towards the 50. Schwartz didn't complete the mark. Wheels onto the left foot. Goes looking for Tingay. Pike went down behind the play. Grabbed by Ops. Now Charles. Bacon goal square. It will bounce through. That's his third. Well, he is a dangerous forward. That's his second goal. But he's also figured a couple of other times. A good passage of play. His third goal, I should say. And it all started, of course. And here it is with Schwartz, who attacked the ball well. Huskis was run down. And there he goes. Well done. So the ultimate turnover. Sydney heading for a goal. And Huskis was barreling down the ground. Charles got his third. The difference out to 20 points again. Steins clears the centre. Good long kick out towards right half forward. Hilton and Huskis. Wouldn't want to say those two names with a mouthful of garlic. Good tackle by Norrish. Umpire's going to bounce it just off the centre square. Crunch time now for Sydney. Richmond supporters keeping their fingers crossed that the Swannies can do the deed. Melbourne on top at the moment. As we mentioned at half-time, just too many options up forward. Love it. Bays. Read it best. Chips it in short, out to the centre wing position. Lewis, great speed to get away from Dyson. Onto the left foot, now kick it. Got in front, didn't read it that well. Philandy, a great tackle on Primke. Oh, oh. Kelly tries to go off the ground, wasn't it, holding the ball? He's going to be a legging paid. A late decision. It looked as though it was a good tackle. Well, umpire speaking to Hopgood. Well, I thought that might have been paid as a very good tackle by Philandia. Had to be. That's what I thought. Across the board, three votes. And Dyson now, as we just saw, picking up uh, Lewis. He was able to turn on a thropney bit. He's not exactly fast over the ground, Lewis, but he's uh, very, very quick at changing direction. Paul Kelly's kicked one goal. That was in the second quarter. 25 metres out, he's got his second. 14 points, just over 15 minutes till three-quarter time. And the Swans will not go away. Kapler out of the middle, and it's smothered initially. Kelly with dash back to Kapler, about 75 metres from goal. Heads for home. Kick it, got fingertips to it, couldn't rake it in. And it goes through off his hands for a behind. It's interesting now that Dunkley's in the ruck. He's playing in the ruck, and uh, Rose seems to be about cross half forward. 
No substitute for getting it out of the centre here at the SCG. Centre breaks. 15 to 14, Sydney's way. So that last one tipping the balance. Stephen Phoebe. They do a good job here, Sydney. They really have that man who's kicking in from Melbourne in a quandary. Well, that's the thing to do when you're in a quandary. Go down the middle with it. Tingay worked off the ball. Waters. Nicely done. Kapler was pushed in the middle of the back, surely. Kickett's got the ball. Kapler will get the free kick. Kickett, meantime, has snapped at goal. I think he may have kicked it, but the advantage will not be paid there, and rightly so by the umpire. Kapler in the act of kicking. No doubting that. Kapler already has two, almost a third just moments ago. Kicked a great pressure goal in the second quarter. They really required it to stay in touch, Sydney, and Kepler did it. Is he to the job now? What a shocker. Minton Connell. Kick it's on in the square. Minton Connell runs around and kicks the goal anyway. Well, his second goal. He's kicked three points before that. There is Simon Minton Connell. A great snap, hooking the ball well over the right shoulder. This is a shocking kick by Darren Kepler. He's a better kick than that. He kicked a great pressure goal in the second quarter. So Minton Connell gets the goal, put it down as a good pass. He's kicked two goals, three. And Sydney clawing at the heels of the Bees. 85 to 92. 14 and a half minutes left in the third term. The crunch term of football. Can Melbourne come back and can they answer those goals and go on and win this game? Their season virtually depends on it. Huskis taps the ball over the boundary line. And it will be thrown in on centre wing. He was the man who was run down a short time back. Complete turnover, after which Charles got a goal. So seven points. Melbourne's lead at halftime was 14. Ten points at quarter time. Daniels. Tackled. Well, almost out of bounds. In fact, it is now off the hands of Philandia. Sydney fans yelling their encouragement. Powell playing on the half forward line for Melbourne. He had the job of uh, going or a tagging job on and off the ball with the on ball as being picked up by Brunton. Steins and Rose, Viney, good shepherd by Charles. Kick is high towards centre half forward. Lion into space, good shepherd. And he takes the mark. You wouldn't back against him from here either with the breeze, but he's gone short. Player on the lead is Schwartz. Tries to get up his right foot, he does around Bays. Good looking drop punt, oh. and that's a goal. Great kick. Goal. 98 to 85 back in the middle. Obster's got the ball. Held to him now, and the umpire wants it. So at one stage, Melbourne led by 19 points. That was in the first term. They got out to lead by 16 points in the second term. And early in this quarter, out by 20 points. But every time Sydney have reeled them in. And bear in mind, Melbourne have got the breeze. They're no good things from here. Charles hooks it down towards half forward. This is great. He crashes his way through. Oh, well done, kick. McMahon. He was taken high, but. It will go back, I think, to the man initially with the ball. That was Gray. He, too, was tackled high. He's a strong player. Oh, strong interesting kick. kick. Kapler did well to go back and get a hand on that one. He needed to. Now he's on the ground like a cork in the ocean. Dare we say it. The hand pass not particularly good. Taken by Lyon. Here's Schwartz, about 55 metres from goal. Spears it into Pike, who missed it. Smith tried to go back. Gray on the assist, close to the line. Gray brilliantly smothered. Well, I thought it was. It goes to Kapler. It may have been touched. No, Kapler's got the mark out there. It seemed to deflect. He kicks it around the outer side. Rose, fast running out of space. Well done by Hopgood. Pushed off for Landia. Still close to the line. The player's working in a confined area. Phoebe gets it to Norrish. Norrish hugs the boundary line. That certainly took a deflection. Waters, that could be holding the ball. Line just hanging on. And that's the correct decision. It. Ryan knew he was on a winner there. Wouldn't let go. Gary Lyon on the outer side. Immediately goes for distance. Schwartz surrounded. Got a hand to it. In front, Hilton. Schwartz emerges with the ball going at his fifth. He's wide of the mark. It bounces out of bounds in the opposite pocket. So boundary throw in. 12 minutes left. Left forward pocket for the D's. Sydney with that breeze that Neil Cordy says has sprung up. They'll have it in the last quarter. And, of course, the legs are a bit tighter. Schwartz up against Bays. Hilton, a couple of shots at it. Didn't come off. Charles, hand pass too hot for him. Now Obst. 
Going for his 10th kick, couldn't do so. Gray farms it out well. Doreen from left half back, short kick up to Philandia, who takes the mark in front of Hopgood. Turns on a threepenny bit. Kapler. Not a great pass, but under pressure, kick it. Can't control the bouncing ball, gets Cannon into, gets rid of it quickly, tried to find Huskis with the hand pass. Yes, a trip Free kick against Sydney, and the advantage is played. Tinge, man on a mission at centre wing is Norrish, who's just come on in the third quarter. Not a great kick by him, though. It's a little bit too wide for Brett Lovett, and the ball out of bounds at Melbourne's left half forward flank. First time I've seen Norrish, a very stylish mover. Looks like he's got great speed over the ground, but then again, he's got fresh legs. These other guys would be a little tired. Rose with Steins. Well, nice old push in the back there. Sun also a factor here. Steins gets front spot. Kick away came from McMahon. Tingo. Pressuring from Daniels and also from Andy. It's out of bounds. Almost off the boot of Gary Lyon. The skipper will well away from goals at the moment. And of course, Pike doing a great job in front. He's kicked five so far and Schwartz has got four. The three pronged Melbourne attack which might be the telling factor in this game this afternoon. Daniels, who lost a contact lens early, thrown to the ground by Dyson when he didn't have it held too long in the tackle. He'll take the free kick. Well, my best first-year player at St Kilda. Kicks towards right half forward. Dunkley couldn't take it. Todd Viney. Right to Obst. Great tackle by him. Dunkley's got it. Oh, uh, Lewis has it now. Dyson. Good endeavour. Duckley again. Tinga goes at him hard. And that's a free kick to Sydney. And uh, not, uh, Rose is off and Caven's on. Caven going down across half forward for Sydney. And he's by himself if Duckley can get it across. He's so Duckley. He's not the best kick in the world, this man. When we saw him earlier kick for goal, now he's gone backwards. Doreen's got it, though. Coming on the lead, Caven. Good kick. And Caven's marks. Just inside the 50, and you can sense Melbourne are making this difficult for themselves. The Swans have got the centre victory here. They're still trailing by 13 points, but they've Melbourne. lifted a little bit. He fancies himself cave, and he's gone back very deliberate. He's going to have a shot. He'll have to let this go from about 52 metres. He'll remember this season for one thing or another. Mm. 52 metres out. It holds up in the breeze. It won't quite carry. Yes, it will. Neat's just across the line. Got a fist to it. But it had crossed the line, so They're behind regardless. 13-8 plays 16-2. 16-2. Remarkable kicking by the Demons. St Kilda, of course, 18-2 in round 18 against Essendon. Melbourne might better that this afternoon. They haven't scored it behind since the first quarter. Again, uh, Phoebe in a two minds as to where to go. It's good by Sydney the way they make them hold the ball up. Gentle kick finds Obst. Obst hugs the boundary. Steins judged it very nicely. Takes it and goes. Feeds it inside. Tingay gets by Daniels. Tingay close to the line. Goes towards half forward. That's a good kick. And the mark is taken by Hilton. Hilton about 70 metres from goal. Sets it up for Neitz down there. Or is it Schwartz? Schwartz got hands to it. Ooh. Oh, Cow crashes into the fence. The ball ricochets back into play. But it's a boundary throw in. 16-2 to 13-8. Norris is going with Kelly when Kelly's off the ball. Norris is with him. Just another reason why that line is too close to the fence. Said that a few times. Viney tackled by Creswell. Charles, great snap! Just off target. In fact, it's more than just off target. It's out of bounds on the full. Smith to bring it back in. Pike will stand the mark. Umpire directing him to come around a little bit. Dunkley with Steins. Those two uh, clashed heavily a couple of years ago, you may remember, with uh, Steins coming off second best. Sydney with numbers. Oh, Lewis oh, is trying a Pele act. Bursting his way through Hopgood. Dyson, Charles. In fact, there is a whistle on play. It's going to be a free kick, and it's going to Melbourne. And the recipient is Paul Hopgood. He'll be too far out to score. Hasn't scored a goal today. And will kick from about 65 metres out. Kicks into the pocket. Probably not a good option, but when you've got Schwartz on the end of it, you could certainly argue with that statement. Schwartz has kicked four goals. Can he keep Melbourne's unblemished record regarding behinds intact 
8-2 at quarter time. Now 16-2. He oh, can keep it intact. Yeah. That's a goal. Great goal. Early penalised. Just over eight minutes till three-quarter time. Dunkley plays on immediately. Cresswell, who started so well, three goals in the opening turn. That was a free Lewis kick. Lewis get a free kick, and the advantage oh. is paid. Well, that's very interesting. Well, he didn't pay advantage, Dennis. He just said, play on. Now he's penalising Lewis. Oh, oh, that is Yes, I agree with you. So you say he didn't blow the whistle? No, he said, he said play on. The indication was play on. Fair enough. Here's Obst. I thought he paid the free, and because Lewis was running with the ball, I was going to say it's a brave umpire to take that upon himself. Anyway, Dyson's got it. Kicks down towards half forward. Well taken by Melbourne. The hand pass came from Hilton to Viney. Good the tackle. Hot in trouble. Waters sends it back towards the wing. Lewis, who's all fired up, goes up. Can't take the mark. Presswell, read it off hands. Feeds it across to support. Dunkley's hand pass, not particularly good. Presswell. His hand pass found kick it, but in the meantime, it's coming back, and I think maybe Dunkley's free, is it? No? Stein's off, Irving on for Melbourne. The umpire is still whistling. Now, he's going to play it to Cresswell, but I thought Cresswell was in the clear, and that, in fact, it was Dunkley's kick. Scotty Stop. Waters has gone off for Sydney, and young uh, Wade Chapman coming on for Sydney. That's a Sydney kick, that's the main thing. Kick it, goes looking for Mitten Connell. Well played by Primke. Great attempt at the mark. Grundon was slung in the act of kicking. Meets gets it away. This is Phoebe. Even his own defensive area. Pulls it back towards the centre of the ground. Fisted forward down there by Chapman. Taken by Obst. Away to Primke. Primke from half back towards half forward. Storming up the ground. Bay has got an unkind bounce. Hilton behind. Spots the goals. Heads for home. And he's missed. He should have given it to Charles, I think. Charles was on for the instinctive hand pass. Hilton took it. Still, it was there for the taking. He missed. 19 points the difference. Six and a half minutes left in the quarter. And the last six minutes of this term vital. If the Ds can sneak another couple of goals, you'd think that maybe they'd be just about home. If Sydney can stay with them to three-quarter time. They'll have the breeze in the last quarter. Smith kicks in. Irving at the back, kick it with the big fly. Obst in front, kick it, recovers better. Shoots out the hand pass, almost too hot for Gray. who gets on his bike very quickly and gets clear of Lyon. Kicks towards Caven on left centre wing. Caven on his own. Over the head of Neitz. Minton, oh, Tyler, Mark, kick. push, whatever. Now the advantage is paid. Kepler, a great kick on the goal, or at goal on the run, but this time he's missed to the right-hand side. And puts it through for only a behind. So I've got to say, Pitt, I don't like umpires paying advantage inside the 50, especially when it's a player like Minton Connell. I That's mean, right. So was it really an advantage? They must have a crystal ball. Melbourne comes away again. Hopgood's kick. Around towards the centre wing position. Gray and Lyon. Punch might find Caven. No, it won't. It beats him over the boundary line on the outer side in front of the Bruno Riley stand for a throw in. And the six minutes left. Scotty Waters back on, and I think Doreen has gone off for Sydney. Plenty of changes, therefore, being made by Ron Barassi to try to lift his side in the last few minutes of this quarter over the head of Dunkley. Chance for Obster, who's been brilliant this afternoon. Brett Lovett right on the boundary line, centre wing. Lovett's kicked down towards Schwartz. He got a little bit of a heave-ho from Bayes. Made sure the umpire saw it. And even from where he's standing now, you'd give him some sort of a chance. He's kicked a couple of brilliant goals this quarter. This is going pretty close oh, as well. Oh, not again. What a great kick, three in the turn. Oh. Four points. And they work it forward again. They've responded. They could sense that Sydney was stealing themselves. Phoebe, Steve Phoebe has kicked from long range. It's another one for Melbourne. Oh, that's terrific. Out of the centre. Long kick. And Sydney reeling. Well, 18 goals, three. Irving just getting there, desperate lunge. One player that we haven't seen since halftime is Sean White. And just looking down at the Melbourne bench, he's not on the bench either. Maybe there's a serious injury to Sean. Let's hope he's all right for next week. Well, the start, despite that goal by Steve, Phoebe has been David Schwartz. Six goals, three of them in this term. Marks go at it. Dunkley gets it down. Caven, quick hands away. Kelly in trouble. Kick it. 45 metres out, Derek kick it. Quick reply. Well, it's raining goals. The 14th on the board for the Swans. 14-9, Melbourne, 19-3. Well, kick it as soon as he let this ball go, knew it was a goal. We watch him here. 
Bang, the ball's in flight. He was walking back to the centre because he knew it was straight through. Exciting passage of play. Still four goals the difference, though. And the few minutes just before that kick at goal may be vital in the wash-up of this match. 93 to 117. Melbourne by four goals. Close to three-quarter time. Still under five minutes, though. Irving and Dunkley. Lovett couldn't handle it. The punch too hot. The two Phoebes. Matthew to Stephen combining. Gary Lyon clear of Gray at right centre wing. Long kick in towards full forward. Smith getting back. Ops claiming he was held. Gets the ball, drops it. Still he goes. Was he tripped up or ridden into the ground? Umpire says no play on. Now it's going to be a bounce. Interesting, Pete, in that last passage of play. We saw Schwartz lead to that right full forward pocket very deep. And Lyon saw him there and elected to pull it back to the middle. My suggestion at this stage, kick it to him in the pocket because he <laughs> loves it out there. He's not wrong. Three great goals from the boundary. Obst went up, tried to do a Gary Ablett. Pinch it and kick a goal. Off uh, Daniel's boot. Now it comes out to Tingay over the head of Gray. Too hot for him. Love it on the burst. Kappler's got him. Great tackle. Ball jarred free in the tackle. And Pike, good hip and shoulder. Ball through for a rush behind. He's a strong forward, Martin Pike. He's laid a couple of heavy bumps today. Good running and good chasing here by Kapler. Great tackle. Headed it through almost. Bays to kick in. 25 points the difference. And the way we've been going this afternoon, that's not a huge lead, so don't write Sydney off just yet. Still very much in this contest, but they wouldn't want to get uh, too far behind. Irving, former West Coast Eagle, takes the mark. Taking a long time getting into the senior side at Melbourne through one reason or another. Out to Schwartz, leading in the pocket, as Jen uh, Dennis suggested. Why not? Still he goes, Schwartz, paddling it in front of him. Kapler comes at him. Schwartz wheels around. Long left footer, marking contest in front. Obst nearly took it. Charles and kick it. Did he get a boot to that? Didn't have it. And rush through for a free kick. It's the ladder. Well, it's a goal anyway, isn't it? That's what. I, well, I was querying whether it came off his boot, Dennis. Obst is saying it's a goal according to the goal umpire, but it's coming back to Charles. I like the way Schwartz. I mentioned it well, before. Did, it did come off hard, his boot? Hard yeah, look at that goal. And here it is Whoa. going through a contentious issue but the man responsible for Schwartz we got it he's got it anyway Sean Charles his fourth so that's a big goal 20 goals four to 14 nine and the difference now 31 points the biggest it's been so far today and here it is the play leading up to it was very good by Schwartz and McMahon might have got a finger to it anyway not that it matters now. No, a moot point. And the margin is out to 31 points now. So Melbourne sprinting away just when they needed to. And they've shown several times today. No lead is safe with them. Sydney have been able to work their way back in a few times. Here's Dunkley out of the middle, down towards half forward. Cave it in pursuit, coming to mid at Viney. Well played, Todd Viney. Knocked it to his own advantage. Storms around the outer side. Has had one bounce. Looks downfield. Kicks towards half forward. Steve Phoebe from behind. No contest, though. Huskis, the young man from Norwood, took the mark, played on. Kicks towards centre, half forward for his side. Reaching over the top, Dyson. Well gathered by Phoebe. Phoebe settles again. Uses the ball brilliantly. Chance of a goal here. Tinge looks downfield. Goes towards full forward. Schwartz pushes off his man and takes the mark. Well, Bayes found himself under the ball. Awkward situation. Schwartz simply too strong to go back on, given their physiques. And Schwartz just falling away. Watch this again. Well, he's pushing off there, not in the back, but he's pushing off. Going at his fourth goal in the yeah. term, and he's got it. Seven for the afternoon. How about that? He loves the SCG this afternoon. Some of his goals quite outstanding. I wonder if he bowls quick. 21-4 to 14-9. But also his hand had a hand in a couple of others. That last one that Sean uh, Charles got was Schwartz. He's done an exceptional job today. Seven goals to Schwartz. Charles has four. Pike has five. The eights may very well be just decided. 130 now to 93. That's a pretty substantial lead in the context of this game. Waters out of the centre. Gets it back again from Dunkley. 
and going the long way home and came from Chapman now Daniels Chapman runs onto it again Tingay Daniels has got him holding the ball no fans telling the umpire what they think of his decision might have broken the back of the Sydney Swans that last goal Kelly can the captain do something good hand pass for Landia Hopgood's got him in the back for Landia so Peter Philandia with a shot at goal to say Sydney needs one would be the understatement of the afternoon it's good ruck work by Dunkley just pushing uh, Irving out then getting the long, long handball into Philandia but he ran into trouble lucky to get out of it well, the former bomber rover with kick number eight one minute left in the quarter 130 to 93 is the current score it's a behind and they badly needed goals so Peter Philandia his first score of the day 130 now to 94 one minute left so the D's almost booking their passage for next week Primke's kick is short oh. was he off uh, Hopgood not according to the umpire Stephen Phoebe up higher but Daniels couldn't complete the mark for Landia recovers better that's almost a throw pushing the backs is the umpire now he's reversing the decision because through an act of frustration Tingay's pushed uh, for Landia and the decision reversed it was going to go for, uh, to Tingay kick it down Ooh. to the contest away they come again Hopgood quick hand pass now it comes to Andrew Opst from Dyson Kick towards left half forward. And the man down there is Mark Bays. The bounce might beat him. Now it doesn't. Close to the boundary line. Confronted by Hilton. And the ball out of bounds in front of Lewis, right next to the interchange guns. Dying seconds of the third term. And Melbourne have kicked seven goals in this quarter. Eight in the first, six in the second. And now productive again. Brunton upended. Lyon somehow got it out of there. And I think he's going to get a free kick, Gary Lyon. Got a couple of goals today, but overshadowed on the forward line by David Schwartz with seven. Four in this term. Pike has five and Charles four. So they've taken some holding down on the forward line. And Lyon decides to try his luck. And it wobbles just inside the 50. It's all over. Three-quarter time at the SCG. All over in more ways than one, one suspects. Melbourne 21-4, Sydney 14-10. It's looking bleak for Richmond. Seven goals to three in the third quarter, and Melbourne opening up what you would think could just about be a match-winning lead of 36 points. David Schwartz, brilliant in that term. He's got seven for the match, three magnificent goals for the quarter. Martin Pike, five, didn't kick any in that quarter. Sean Charles, four, their major goal kickers. Darren Creswell has four for the Sydney Swans. And the all-important question, Don Scott, is could you see Sydney coming back and putting pressure on the Demons in the last quarter. Well, it's hard to say, Peter, but I'd say after that third quarter that Melbourne really did play well and uh, they realised the situation. They've got to, they've just got to win and they're playing with a, a very, very confident brand of football. They've got the big fellows up there, which are really hard to man, and they're mobile. Schwartz, Lyon and Pike has also contributed up there. So they're the, the real headaches uh, for Sydney. But Sydney, to their credit, they're still in there and they're chipping away. They would have given this away 12 months ago, but I reckon there's a future here for Sydney if they can continue on the same style of football that they're playing. So Ron Barassi, for the last time this year, walks off the ground, hoping that his side can perhaps take out the points and get off the bottom of the ladder. And the World Swimming Championships, a reminder, on Seven Sport, continue exclusively this evening. Check your local guide. Some great action over there from Rome. And you'll see it continuing tonight with Bruce McAvaney and the team over there. Certainly something to look forward to. OK, let's look at these stats for the third quarter now, a quarter in which Melbourne went from 14-2 to 21-4 to increase their lead to 36 points at the final change. Well, they went longer, Melbourne, into their forward line, and uh, they didn't have as many positions. You can see their positions are, are rather, well, about the same. Actually, handballs counteract the, uh, the kicks. The centre breaks were favouring Sydney in the second quarter, but Melbourne have pulled that back. They've one more out of the centre, so... Uh, 
Yes, a very interesting game. It'll be interesting at the end of the game to see really how the stats match up because there really hasn't been much in it. On the stats for the match so far, let's go down to Neil Cordy on the boundary line. Yes, Peter, I think David Schwartz probably has with that terrific quarter there just about wrapped up Melbourne's uh, final finals chances. Uh, unless the breeze is still fairly strong down here, but unless the Swans kick the first two or three and get them very quickly, Peter, I think it's all over. Yes, fair call, Neil. I think few would disagree with you. 36 points the difference, and what magnificent kicking, 21-4. Interestingly that Steins is still on the bench. Maybe just a precaution. Irving hasn't done too much today, has he? So he'll be certainly fresh. We so sure saw Sean, Sean White come out at the three-quarter time address. He is limping, so that's not a good sign. The final quarter of the year for Sydney. Will it be for Melbourne? The difference is 36 points as we begin the last term. Rose to go against Irving. He's spent a lot of the time today on the bench. One by Rose. Sydney, as Neil Cordy suggested, do need the first two. Neats flips it over the top of the pack. Creswell and Lovett. Ball not bouncing kindly for him. Finally gets it back to Chapman. Hand pass. Well, Tingay just about intercepted that. Now it comes to Vidi from left centre wing. Up towards full forward. Oh, oh great mark, Schwartz. He's paid, he paid it. That? Oh, oh, I, don't it. That. I don't think he should have paid it. No, I don't think so either. Uh, that the one hand brought it down onto the ground and yes. then into the arms. You watch this. Good grab there. It bounced. Oh. Oh, 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 the umpire won't like seeing that. Well, in the early in the replay, the umpire had a good view of that. I mean, he was running towards them, and that side was exposed out to the left of the pack. He's got the goal. That will sew it up. Bad luck, Tigers. The demons are there, you would say, from here. Eight goals to David Schwartz. And uh, Mike Willisey won't be too happy about that either. 22-4. Melbourne's tally. Watch the umpire here, Pete, running down the ground. Not that one. The next of them. Well, he had a good position, uh, Perfect. Dennis. Perfect. Perfect, yes. Brings it in and just doesn't control it. Comes to ground. Oh, well. That's what they are human, the umpires. Certainly. If someone said to me last night they don't make as many as mistakes as what the players do out there. The players make a lot more mistakes, but uh, the poor old umpire was criticised. He didn't say commentators, did he, <laughs> fella? <laughs> There's Lovett out of the middle, down towards half forward. In trouble, Doreen, I think it is. It is. He was claimed by Obst. And the bounce still inside the centre square. So Melbourne kicking well clear now. They're out by 42 points. Hard to make a case for Sydney despite the breeze from here. Raked in by Irving. Out of the pack. It bounces inside the 50. Dunkley appear to be held. No free kick. Wide of the pack. This is Smith close to the boundary line. Whoops. Mm. Higgins takes it across. No value in that hand pass by Shane Smith. No, needed a kick. Melbourne have squandered three three-quarter time leads this season, including one of 23 points against these Swans back in round nine, but the margin even bigger today, and of course so much riding on the result. We have a ball up. And today's later game will decide who Melbourne will meet if in fact they are to finish seventh. Rose goes up, robbed of it by Irving, who's doing quite nicely, Matthew Phoebe. Kicks down towards full forward. Oh, over not the again. top. Schwartz turns, oh. going at his ninth. He was legged, I think, and he's <laughs> going to get the free kick. Well, he can do no wrong, can he? No, he, was behind, he was behind initially and still takes the mark. What's this? He's behind, still takes the mark. Very close to a mark. Then decides to play on, gets legged, so he gets another shot. Mm. Didn't take a mark earlier. I think that was a better mark than the other one. It appears to be a <laughs> deliberate trip, too, of sorts. There goes... Schwartz and he's kicked another one. He's got nine for the afternoon. 94 to 142. So it would be a modern day miracle for Sydney to come back from here. And you can tell just by looking at the players now that they realize it's all over. Melbourne will be in the eight. Where they finish remains to be seen. Bounce again. Nine goals to Schwartz. Rose wins that one. And Sydney mounts something here. Creswell, who started brilliantly, 
Kicked three early goals over the head of Kapla. Bounce doesn't too... Uh, it doesn't bounce too kindly for him. And Melbourne again run it out of defence. Tingay from Dyson towards centre ring. The umpire's played oh, a would have played the man in front on that occasion. Now, Hilton has broken away, but because it's a mark and not a free kick, it won't be an advantage rule. Gary Lyon gets paid the mark here from behind. Mm. Back live. Going to be a Sydney ball this time. Dunkley. Realise that Huskus. Schwartz comes across him. Kick is out wide towards centre wing. Bounce kindly. Yes, it does. For Tingay. Daniels has got him. Umpire says holding the ball. Jason Daniels, who earlier in the day had some trouble with his contact lenses after a heavy knock. Mark Bays. Marks in front of Neitz. Too far out to score, even for him. Best kick in the side. The longest kick anyway. Centres it subsequently. Good Irving, mark. good mark, yes. Confident mark. That'll give him a lot more confidence. Well, he will. Kick away from Hopgood. Bounces towards the boundary line. From Andy, it did well to keep it in. Goes out, takes the footy with him. Gets slung, no free kick. Throw in right on 50. So 16 minutes left, and Melbourne by eight goals. And the Demons, after losing their last two against Sydney, made every post a winner here this afternoon bit of uh, jostling in the ruck there. Lewis came out with the football. Chapman applies a tackle. Melbourne with the numbers. Dyson gives it away. Phoebe. No, it's not Phoebe. It's Norrish. Towards right centre wing. Charles. Good hand pass. Onto his skipper. Won't lose any points for that. Oh, he goes at goal. goal. Great kick oh. at goal by the skipper. Superb stuff, Gary Lyon. Three goals, two to him this afternoon. Terrific hand pass from Charles. 24 goals, four to 14-10. What a superb passage of play by Charles here. Battles on well. Mahn in front, then he follows up and across the line. This was always going to be a goal. Look at that. This classical piece of football. So suddenly the margin out to 54 points. It's gone very quickly from Sydney. And Melbourne doing much as they like now. So, it seems the Demons will play off in the finals. Up goes Rose to get it down. Finally's hand pass was knocked down. Dyson could have been taken high. He's going to get the free kick. Plays on immediately. Tengay. This is Hopgood peeling off half back. Swings it out wide. Here comes Charles. Very lively this afternoon. Well shepherded by Norrish. Centering kick intended for Lyon. The Sun a bit of a problem. Not to him. Good mark. Tengay. Takes it on the 50, goes over the top. Here's a question now of accuracy for Hilton. He lines up and pumps it through. Two behinds to Lyon, one to Hilton and one rush. That's all they've scored this afternoon. Amazing accuracy in front of goal from the D's. Tingay. Out towards right half forward. Pike, who kicked five first half goals. Huskus from South Australia. Norwood, Lewis with Dyson. He got a push in the back. The advantage is paid. Centering kick from him. And the Swans add some respectability to their score. Oh, Irving gave it straight to kick it. Who said thanks very much? Norris has got oh, him. Quick, Great Norris. tackle. Kelly might have been taken high. And he'll get the free kick. Got exceptional speed, Norris. It was a great tackle. So Paul Kelly. Two goals so far, one in the second, one in the third quarter. Courageous Sydney captain. Two best and fairest, 92 and 93. One who leads from the front. That's a good kick, it's a goal. And Kelly gets his third. Still 14 minutes left in the match. Sydney 15-10, a winning score in most matches. Now trailing Melbourne's 25-4 by 54 points. Well, here's Norris. Now, watch Norris come into screen now when he lays his tackle. Great running effort. And the free kick, unfortunately, there holding. It's against Neitz on Kelly. But there was a great captain's goal, that one. Very deliberate. Long way out, too. So accuracy would have been a problem because of the distance the ball would have had to travel. So three goals to Paul Kelly, but the Swans have gone pretty meekly in the last half hour. Haven't shown much. 
So the Tigers will finish outside the top eight after a much improved season. The last couple of weeks have been disappointing. This is Viney. Worked out of it by Daniels, who showed a lot of courage to go after that one. Hand passes wide. Chapman's over the ball now. Viney's on top of him. And it will be bounced out there at right half forward for the Swans. So if they win Melbourne, they finish seventh. And then this afternoon, if the Eagles win, they'll finish on top. Which would mean that Melbourne would play Carlton. If the Eagles lose, Melbourne would play the Eagles. Diving in there. Bayes seems to be playing, playing across half forward, Dennis, too. He was playing down back. Obviously, they need something. He seems to be as a half forward flanker, not as a centre half forward. Irving taps it down. Hopgood. Almost worth a kick, that hand pass. Holding on. It's going to be a free kick to the Swans. Huskus plays on immediately for Landia, kicking it down towards half forward. A lot of jostling down there. No mark taken. Norris could have been pushed in the back by Kickett. No free. Kickett works on. Phoebe's in there. That's Matthew. He was grabbed. Kelly comes out backwards. Kapler's got it now. Kapler over the top to Bayes. He feeds it wider still. Chapman goes to the square. Mitten Connell turns around and gets his third. We go three to Simon Mitten Connell. It was a good handball initially by Kapler. He was one responsible. Here it is. It'll come out here. There's a real pack here. Kepler could have lost his composure and just blasted away towards goal. You see him on the outside of the pack there. Holds himself nicely over the top. And then a series of handballs. And finishes up with Minton Connell's goal. Still 12 and a half minutes left. But the lead is too great. 106 to 154. Obst feeds it out. Ball comes back towards right half forward. And now Cow, who started in defence today, dragged off and holding the ball, says the umpire. The free kick going to uh, Huskus. Doreen takes what was uh, not the greatest of hand passes. Kapler relays it again. Taken by McMahon. Kick down towards half forward. Bump ball, was it? Lewis has got it anyway. Keeps going. Tingay, who's been busy. Wonder what he's looking like in Hilton. Lyon at half forward. Oh, good Beautiful kick. pass to Charles. Oh. Well, Charles gave him one before when Charles oh. took that lightning hand pass. Well, Charles gave him the lightning hand pass at half forward. And the compliment now returned. Sean Charles has kicked four goals this afternoon. Melbourne's multi-pronged attack. The factor here, Charles kicks the goal. 26-4 to 16-10. So it's become something of a rout here. 54 points now. Still a terrific day in Sydney. The shadow is creeping across this famous ground. Irving goes up and hooks it behind. Viney working hard as he always does in that centre square. On the burst is Tingay. On his back got the hand pass to Lovett. Well done. Lovett inside the 50. Lion in front. Juggles the mark. So the beauty of Gary Lyon is he wants to play in front. He hardly ever gets caught behind. And it takes a courageous player to play in front, especially on the forward line. But boy, you do get a hammering. He's going at his fourth goal here. And there was a good pass by Lovett. In terms of goal kicking, his standout performance this season, eight against Essendon in round 19. Gary Lyon from 40. Normally a very good kick. This is no exception. Gun barrel straight. Twenty-seven goals for. Well, if you're thinking about confidence going into a final round, this is going to give you heaps. Viney has also done particularly well in the second half. Lucky not to be get, given a free kick there, Tingo, because Viney's put Creswell out of action. It's a good kick by Lovett. Back into the centre. 27-4, 166, amazing scoreboard to 16-10. Neitz overruns it. Opportunity for Lewis. Tackle applied by Neitz, who finally gets out the hand pass. Intercepting as Jason Daniels on 50. Long bomb from him into the goal square. And the mark is there to kick it. 
you try and play on here. Meats is an interesting player for Melbourne. I'd like him to find some form, I'm sure. <laughs> Almost tried to do a Simon Madden there, sneak right up to the man on the mark and just poke it through. Remember that goal for the Bombers when he went left in yeah. a situation like this? <laughs> There's no margin there at all for overtaking on the left, Pete. <laughs> Not much daylight, is there? <laughs> finally runs around, <laughs> finally kicks the goal. Good on you, well done. <laughs> It's touched. Oh, what? Come on. Well, who touched it? Okay. Let's see who did touch it. Who did touch it? Not there. Kick hasn't been affected yet. There, I think. Mm. Phoebe, Phoebe putting the finger up. Phoebe. Well, plenty of drama there. I think the difference is not close up. Primke. And that's a fine mark. Neats finally getting back into it. Love it. On left centre wing. Good block by Irving to keep Gray out. The kick will be right on 50. McMahon, strong mark in front and breaks clear. Hits the ground running, goes out wide. Gray takes the mark. Kelly's there if he wants him. He goes inboard to Creswell. Gets it back to Daniels. Viney claims him. Is that holding the ball? Yes, it is, according to the umpire. Tough call. He's going to take the free kick on left centre wing. Todd Viney. 93 best and fairest. Runner-up a couple of years earlier. Kicks out towards left half forward flank. A little bit too wide for Obst and uh, Pike. And there's Sean White on the boundary line. Maybe got a corky or a bit of a hammy. I haven't seen him in action for a while. Yeah, Sean White, 30 years of age, which means he was born in a Melbourne Premiership year, but a long way from the MCG. And they're looking at another finals campaign. There's Philandia. Was he taken high? Certainly mugged. Tingay's in there. Daniels comes out backwards. And they lock it up, and there'll be a ball up out there. So, interesting afternoon, this one. There's been a great rivalry developed. Oh, that service for you, Sean White. How's that, Don? Did that happen in your day? <laughs> I wouldn't want to go on the ground. You just stay there all <laughs> afternoon. I'll take that. Cresswell wrestled to the ground. Daniels over the top. Just talking about that rivalry. Melbourne and the West Coast Eagles. Well, this afternoon, I guess most of the Melbourne he's supporters will he's watch gonna... the late game. Let me finish this, Don, if you wouldn't mind. What's happening? Well, sure. It's going to come back on. He's limping at three-quarter time. He's going to come back on now. Well, that neck Must massage. Work. Yeah, it'll do oh. it for you every time. What, the neck massage? Yeah, here's Obst. Just talking about that rivalry as I was. There goes the kick down towards half forward. But the Melbourne supporters will be, I think, barracking for the West Coast Eagles this afternoon. Here's Norrish, who pulls it back to the middle, and Lewis goes back and takes the mark. That is, unless, of course, they want to go to Perth and play the Eagles. Strange bedfellows created by the final eight. And what can happen within? Here's Tingay. It was knocked down there by Phoebe. Tingay buried. He puts his body in Steve Tingay. He's terrific. Ops going off for Melbourne and White coming back on. Yes, and Ops immediately, he's got any sense at all, will lie down and get a neck massage. Boundary throw in on the wing. He went to a bounce on the wing. <laughs> You're distracted. I am. <laughs> One down by... I've never seen that before. <laughs> that was service. Kick down towards half forward. <laughs> I could say. Chapman dives in. And there'll be a ball up. Melbourne going for its possible highest score against Sydney in 1991 here in round 15. They kicked 177 points and they've already got 166. McMahon short of centre across the ground. Underneath it is Creswell. Doreen outside the square. Kicks to half forward. Minton Connell will have to get back quickly and hope for a good bounce, but there is a whistle. That's going to be a Melbourne free kick. Or is it going to Sydney? It's going to Sydney. Lewis. So Dale Lewis. Well within kicking distance too. From 50 metres out. Goal umpire hasn't moved. He's got the goal. 113 to 166, high scoring affair, Higgins to Chapman, and floats it across the ground, it comes bouncing out towards the wing, now it's a foot race, Kapler and Phoebe, worked out of it well was Kapler by Matthew Phoebe, taken by Tengay, who's not happy with the kick, admonishes himself as it bounces out of bounds in front of Viney, Viney this afternoon, 24 possessions,
Boundary throw in. About 60 metres from Melbourne's attacking goal. Cal took a while to move the ball. Well done out of the congestion by Caven. Kelly's kick was blanketed. Spills wide. Daniels a half chance. Kelly did well. Spinning out of trouble. Couldn't control it. Now Daniels emerges with it. Gives it to Doreen. Now Cresswell. Cresswell through the middle. Goes down the gut inside the 50. Off hands kick it. Lurking behind. Bacon goal square. Pops another one through. So Derek's got four. He's a mercurial player, Derek Kickett. We've seen him do some unbelievable things. One third quarter at the MCG. Wow, was that a quarter of football when he played for Essendon? They, they could have done with him this season, couldn't they, the no, Bombers? I have seen a player play like he did in that day. Gee, it was a terrific quarter of football. Look at this. A lot of composure stands there. Awkward kicking style, but it's effective. Very similar to the Cracker Brothers. Yes, that one was, actually. The way he got rid of that. Results what counts. Kick its fourth goal. Swans coming a little bit closer, but the damage has been done in that bad half hour that Dennis mentioned. Late third, early fourth quarters. Doreen's kick up towards half forward. Minton Connell caught behind. Lewis bustled off the football. Tries to get it out in front of the pack. Hopgood. Hand passes to his own advantage. Well, nearly it goes out of bounds in Sydney's left forward pocket. We will see a throw in 30 metres from goal. Under six minutes left in the match. 12 kicks to Hopgood and nine hand passes. He's done well. And Schwartz is going off the ground. Hilton. High kick. Gray takes the mark in front of Gary Lyon. That pair covering plenty of territory. Yeah, actually, Schwartz is going up across half forward. White's gone down to the full forward position. And Sean Charles has gone up further up midfield. Great goer. Here's Troy Gray. Kick it with the fly. Lewis, standing start, kicks a goal. Or has he missed? Might be just off target it is. One point. Kicked by Dale Lewis. He brought the crowd to life again here at the SCG, but not so. So Lewis, one goal, one. To his credit and to his name, both coming in the last quarter. Hilton lays it off. Dyson, one of the best kicks in the side. Dyson's kicked to half forward. Off the hands of the pack, right on 50. Doreen should get back there first. Well, he does. Dunkley grab when he didn't have it. And it will be a ball up. 40 metres from goal. It's interesting when you look at the scoreboard that uh, Sydney have only had one less shot for goal than what Melbourne. Melbourne 31, Sydney 30 shots at goal. David Schwartz has got nine goals. That's a heck of a difference. Mm. Down goes Doreen. So I suppose most interest now whether he can get his 10th. We could find out. Charles across his body. Out of bounds in the opposite pocket. Well, the point kickers for Melbourne, Gary Lyon has two and Hilton one, and there was one rushed. Mm. Facing a mission next week, unless they smarten up. 27 <laughs> 4. It's got to be some sort of a record. Close to the boundary line, Cresswell tries his heart out constantly. The former Tasmanian boots it towards half back, taken low down by Daniels. Plays on, kicks it very high towards the wing. Most a clever mark to Lewis. Tingay spinning as he tried to pick that ball up. Well done by Lewis. A strong tackle out, number two to one, but he fought on. Interesting player, Dale Lewis. There was talk he'd go down to Melbourne, and Footscray were interested. I think he'd be a very good player in the top side. Very polished. He's doing it hard, his time in Sydney. Still, that's the luck of a career as Philandria goes down towards half forward. Well taken by Bayes, juggled it around a couple of opponents and pulls it back. Minton Connell in best position. Where's oh, Derek well Kicker? done. Minton Connell takes the mark. Actually, that was a terrific passage of play because Bayes actually hooked the ball around looking for Minton Connell. And Minton Connell didn't let him down because he played in front, as you can see there, using his body well. Didn't get bustled out of position. It was a good effort. He's kicking here at his fourth goal. His third of the second half. The umpire goes a long way, and he's missed. That's why. Disappointing. Deserved better, didn't it? It yep. breaks at the knee when he kicks for goal. So 166, Melbourne still 11 points shy of their best score against Sydney, which was here at the SCG in 91. The second next. best was 173 in 19, uh, 1990. I'm sitting next to Peter Hudson now. <laughs> Kick away comes from Hopgood to the outer side. Gray with a big climb. Can't bring it down. 
Melbourne runners are there of plenty. Steve Tingay for possession number 20. And loses it. Daniels grabbed when he didn't have it. And will take the free kick. Adam Huskis can feel for him there because the same thing happened to him when he had a bounce early and lost it. Hit Lewis on the chest. Went through again without it. Hilton. Funny old hand pass. Now Dyson. Dyson's high kick. Lion in front. Caven from behind. Dunkley. Hand pass too severe for him. Taps it out deliberately. No. Not according to the umpire. Let's have a wrestle, boys. So boundary throw it. 50 metres out. Two and three quarter minutes left in the match. Gray up high. Kick to the boundary line. Whistle in the meantime. Sydney free kick. And it's going to be taken by number 25 for the Sydney Swans in Troy Gray. Good kick up towards midfield. He's done well in the last quarter. Huskis has been off the ground, but uh, shows signs that he could go a bit further in his football career. Huskis kicks down towards Smith. Short of left half forward, Minton Connell on a lead. Another good chest mark. Philandia stands his ground. Oh, oh, bad kick. Bad kick. He hangs his head in shame. He's got cramped too, the little fellow. And the ball driven out of the Swans' attacking zone. Up towards midfield where Minton Connell still is. Now Smith again gives it back to him. Tries to paddle it onto Kapler, which he does. Norris comes at him. Feeds the hand pass to Charles, who's been pretty good today, what he's done. He's been very dangerous, close to goal. Gray again takes the mark in front of Schwartz, gives it on to Dunkley. His kick floats down towards half forward. Kelly came at it hard. Fell behind. Well done by Hilton. The hand pass not effective. Kelly came back into the fray. Cresswell is slung. Well Irving Maybe. at full stretch controlled that one well. Gives it away to Hilton. It goes down towards half forward and Lyon. He's got four for the afternoon. Schwartz has got nine for the afternoon. Too far out to score. Pulls it back towards centre half forward. Fisted away by Huskis. Cowell runs onto the loose ball. He's 60 metres from goal. Pike, five goals to his name, all in the first half. Couldn't complete the mark. Huskis gets back. Kicks towards the outer side. It's in open space out there. Up comes Bayes. With him is Neats, but the boundary line is too close. Out of bounds with just over a minute to go. And the news is that Melbourne will finish in the top eight. As a result of that scoreline, a most emphatic victory at the end. They were challenged early, but 27 goals for will win you most footy matches. Lovett slaps it out. Cow. Now Norrish. Norrish spears the ball in, intended for Lyon, hits him on the chest. There's a Melbourne, player, there's down. A Melbourne player down too, yeah. Todd Viney it is. Picks himself up, he's all right. He's a tough nut, Todd. Meantime, Gary Lyon with the ball. Going at goal number five. So, what, Charles has got five, Pike five, Lyon looking at five, and Schwartz nine. Say no more. Some collection. Don't tell him he's kicked a point. That's his third for the afternoon. Uh, could be dropped next week. 3-3. Three, 3-3. Three. Three, three. 27-5 to 18-13. And half a minute to go. The aggregate of these two scores would be somewhat of a record. If Melbourne won't get their record score against the Sydney Swans, McMahon marking in the back pocket. Charles on the mark. Good kick by McMahon. He'll get this to centre wing. Strong marking man. contest down there. Dunkley did well. Kick it. He's kicked four goals. Kicks it out to Mark Bays. Clock ticking down. Might be the last kick of the match. Will he go for it from there? Go on, just go long. It's almost play on. Siren's going to beat him. And it did. Not a good way to end for Mark Bays. The siren goes. Melbourne convincing winners. They have made the finals for season 1994. And what a scoreboard. As Dennis said, 27-5 will win you just about any match. 27-5, 167, defeating the Sydney Swans, 18-13, 121. But a good team effort when you look at Schwartz 9, Pike 5, Charles 5 and Lyon 3 goals 3. The big guns up forward certainly did their job here this afternoon. Charles and Kickett, great mates, shake hands at the end of what has been, I think, a pretty thirsty contest in the context of the weather here today.
Temperature in the mid to high 20s most of the afternoon. Nice work out that one for Melbourne on the eve of the finals too, Pete. Good hit out, wasn't it? Yeah, a lot of players will come away from this game with a lot of touches, a lot of confidence and a lot of goals. And of course, Sydney have got another wooden spoon. Just looking at Mark Bays as the umpires come off to quite a hostile reception. Mark Bays kicked that last ball as if it were the wooden spoon. He's seen a few of them in his time as we go down to Neil Court. Yes, Dennis Scott David Schwartz, fantastic game and congratulations on uh, making the final. Thank you very much. Yeah, it was a great effort by the boys. We'll came up here on a mission. I think we proved it today. So, you know, give Carlton a shake next week if, you know, if West Coast win today. So, your previous best before today, you've got nine today. What was your previous bet? Yeah, I'd, well, I think my best was five. I'm not sure. So, you know, it was just a great effort by all the boys. And uh, it's good to get one on the, good to get it on the board. And, you know, it'd be a pleasant flight home now. So, absolutely. Now, I hope you got the set the video for today's game, did you? Yeah, I think Mum would have done that. She always does. So, yeah, she'd be fine. I think you'll like the third quarter. Anyway, well done and congratulations. Thanks a lot. Here's David Schwartz, the top goal kicker in the match with nine. And the interesting part about that stat, he did not kick one behind. How often would you have seen a guy kick nine goals without kicking a behind? Incredible stuff. So repeating the final score, Melbourne in the end did it well. 27-5, 167, defeating Sydney 18-13, 121. We'll take a break. Forty-six points in the end, Melbourne over the Sydney Swans to cement their place in the top eight. David Schwartz finished with nine goals and a best on ground display. Martin Pike got five all in the first half. Sean Charles also got five. Creswell four for Sydney. Derek Kickett also four. And Simon Minton Connell three goals, four by the Sydney four forward. Well, Don Scott, I think the most important thing we can do right now is to look at the ladder. What it does mean is that Melbourne have made the finals and will play either West Coast or Carlton. Yes, and it really does depend on what happens over in the West Coast, this game, which is going to follow between West Coast and Footscray. And uh, yes, it will be of interest, won't it? They'd really want, I suppose, uh, the West Coast to win, stay on top so they don't have to travel across to... Uh, Correct. But then again, Collingwood would be hoping that West Coast would lose. So well, we could see a Collingwood-Carlton game well, next week. That's a possibility as well, isn't it? There is a possibility, but uh, it was a great effort today from Melbourne. I thought their third quarter was the difference. The quarters up until that stage rather even, but that third quarter they kicked 44 odd points and they just gone, they just went away with it. And uh, it was good, great effort. All right, well let's go down to the uh, dressing rooms uh, yeah, now. Yeah. Neil Cordy has got uh, Neil Baum. Yes, Neil, congratulations. It looked uh, fairly tight, but in the end it seemed to be uh, a quite a comfortable win in the end. Well, it's hard to put everything together and get it in perspective. Um, I was pretty disappointed with a lot of the, lot of the things we did, but then in the end we had um, yep. a few blokes who were pretty crook um, and we didn't have many alternatives, so probably in the right, end okay. it was right. Yeah. yeah, you'd have to be delighted with the Ford setup. You've got three uh, with David Schwartz kicking nine and, and plus uh, Gary Lyon and Pike both playing very well. It, it looks very good. Well, it gives us, I thought um, Schwartz wasn't playing as well at, at half forward as, he, uh, as we would have liked him to have done early. And we sort of put him to full forward and said, well, we'll see if we can get it to you. And um, he relished the opportunity. But the other, um, I think Shawnee Charles did pretty well at forward too. And Gary is always going to do well. And Pikey tends to, particularly the first half of games, tends to do um, uh, always kick at least a couple, maybe three or four. Yeah, it was a very a, a tense sort of situation for you coming into this game where you're obviously expected to, to win this one, but you also come in and you had the form of a couple of losses against the Swans in, in recent history. What was your sort of approach during the week? Well, we, we tried to be um, super positive about it and said, you know, this, this is the game that stands between us um, playing in the finals and not, which we've set ourselves for the, for the whole year to do. So... Um, you know, that was very positive, but on the behind all that, I mean, Sydney tend to have done pretty well against us, and, um, and you know, it, it, was a, it was a real, you know, it was a real problem when, um, you know, they st started to get on top a little bit, but, um, well, I suppose it, we just had to win. And, yeah, you know, but that, uh, a great result in the end, and uh, you're there to go next week, and all the best for next week. Thanks, Chris. Neil Baum, obviously pretty happy, and uh, thanks to Neil Cordy down there in the dressing room. So that just about takes us out from the SCG this afternoon. We hope you've enjoyed our telecast and a very good afternoon to you all.